Welcome back, Achievers, to your War Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of August 25th, 2022. We're your host, Elijah, sitting across from me digitally on his little couch in the middle of Singularity, which I believe was like a 2005 game, 360 or something. I'm, I'm blanking 2009, on 2009. 2009, I was way off. I couldn't remember. I remember that. See, I remember the cover. I remember pictures. I don't think I ever played it. Um, oh, it's. It's worth going back for it. Mm. On PC, it's really compatible. So. For me, yeah. that that's up there with um, Darkness, Dark Sector, mm. those types of games that came out around there. That those all kind of just blend together. For me, as also a solid game. Darkness Two, which people should buy, and hopefully one day we would get some sort of Darkness again. That was way too good yeah. for it to end. Way yeah, too exactly. Good. Same with Singularity. If you like Bioshock, play Singularity. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, you know. All things considered, considering how we started the show, that's um, fine. But, you know, we we started a little late, idea. but we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, you have a hard out, yeah. but we should be done way before then. Um, Certainly. You know what? Let's just get in the show. Of course, this is the Easy Review Game Podcast. You know the things: like, comment, subscribe on the YouTube's five star review. Let's get into not so rapid rapid fire. As for seeing in a statement from Embrace of the Koto remake has been removed from being developed at Aspire to Saber and Act of all of this coming from Bloomberg Station Schreier. It's also stated that, quote, the game will likely take at least two more years to finish, end quote, via the site's source on the matter. It was covered on the show that Aspire had fired the game's former design director Brad Prince and art director Jason Miner in July, and it's claimed that the pair were dismissed shortly after the studio finalized a demo of the game to show to Lucasfilm and Sony. Yikes. Yeah, that was kind of rough to hear, but hey, Saber Interactive, I know they make some quality stuff, so hopefully this works out better for the KOTOR fans out there. Yeah, good good on you. I will say, um, I still don't know what this remake is. Like, are they completely remaking parts of the game? Are they going to make a whole new... Because you, if they're changing the combat, you have to change the whole game. So, curious how I, deep I this is going to be. I have a feeling that when they were first working on it, it was more or less just a glorified remaster yeah. where the graphics might have been real pretty, but it still played very jankily and it probably didn't even look that nice to begin with also. So I bet they're going back to the drawing board and they're going to change things more heavily. Including yeah, maybe the combat. And as a reminder, that was technically meant to launch right now. So something <laughs> yeah. bad happened. <laughs> Destiny 2 had a huge showcase announcing a new subclass, new locations, and more coming in the next expansion, Lifefall, coming February 2023. Also announced some crossovers with Echo games like Skins and both Fortnite and Fall Guys alongside the game launching on the Epic Game Store. Also, you can go and snag the 30th anniversary pack, which is free if you claim the game by August 30th. Also, I did forget to mention here, but all expansions are free on every platform the game is on. Until August 30th or the 29th. It's unclear. There was a tweet that said the 30th, but the image says the 29th. So one of those days, it will not be free anymore. But you get to go play with your friends on all the paid content if you'd like. Very good. I'm playing Destiny's New Season. Super fucking fun. Oh, glad to hear it. I might. I will well, say the grappling hooks in the trailer got me interested. Oh, yeah. To maybe come back. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Not going to confirm it because I don't want to give false hope. But the grappling hooks, you add that to a game, I'll be interested. If you're interested in the pirates, this is a very pirate-themed season. So I don't know if that gets you more or less excited. But if you liked the grappling hook, you just wait till Lightfall. Just wait till Lightfall. I think, I think you'll like it. Um, it's one of those things, too, where you can't really try it out before you play it. But, you know, eh, you just... I trust Bungie. They make good game. Play. They make good stuff. They make good stuff. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, God. I, yeah. Yeah, of course, it's grappling hooks, of course. Oh, why didn't I think of that? I'm very excited. <laughs> 343 will be revealing, quote, the next several months, end quote, of Halo Infinite in an update uh, slated for the final week of August. Not really too much else there. Uh, we assume co-op campaign and things of that nature are going to be launching for the full game. And there's a bunch of other things like Forge and things that are probably coming with this big update. And it did say the quote, the next several months. Their seasons are long, so you might get another season coming soon as well. Uh, because they're like almost a year for each season, so get excited. Yeah. Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition was revealed. It comes with the Deluxe Edition, so you get the Deluxe Edition on the game. It's like $300, by the way. Dark Arts Pack, Kelpie Robe, 72 hours early access, 
There's going to be a steel book, a life-size wand replica, a book replica, a wand that floats on the book. Pre-orders start August 25th. So as of recording, hopefully, if you care, you can snag your pre-order. I care about the game. I am not spending $300 on the game, though. <laughs> not doing I'll that. say it, this is one of those games where I admit that it looks cool as mm. a video game. It looks like it's going to be a fun, cool thing to play. I have not cared about Harry Potter, and in the last couple of years, there's been really heavy incentive to not care about Harry Potter. So I'm going to just let this one go on. Maybe I'll come back around when it's on sale in a couple of years, but there's Harry Potter fans out there who love that IP. So, you know, there's a difference between Harry, Harry Potter fans and J.K. Rowling fans. So, of course. Ooh, of the course. Harry Potter fans. Of course. You actually put that very game. eloquently, where I think some people have missed the mark in this whole situation. We've actually covered it on the show before. We're not going to get into it because it's way too complicated, but I think you put it actually very eloquently. Yeah, there's a difference between liking Harry Potter and then being like, you know what? Trans people. There are people who are, yeah, there are people who love J.K. Rowling who have never read Harry Potter, do not care about that franchise. They just love her for her bad views. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, there's there's a lot of nuance in that discussion. But as far as the game itself, then, yeah, I I can't blame you. It, if I found out that fucking I don't know, Michael Kanye Bay West, a terrible person, <laughs> I couldn't watch. <laughs> well, Kanye West, Kanye West was never he's, like my top. He's five, skating. But. He's skating the lines, though. You know, he's pretty influential uh, as well. Maybe I don't know what Jay Z or uh, Kendrick Lamar. If something happens to Kendrick Lamar, I, uh, oh I'm gonna have to God. take the L and still listen to the music, but pretend like I don't. Be like, I hate him. I have never listened to a single song before in my life. Uh, <laughs> like uh, I mean, what people are. Controversies, and that's one of mine. So. That's true. R. Kelly. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Arca- I, you know what? I haven't even listened to the fucking Ignition. Ignition Come on. It's, Go see. I'll turn it on right now. I'll get that. I'll turn this whole podcast around right now. No. And it's not even that I've been like, I'm not listening. It's just I haven't felt the desire. I have I, I, haven't I think either. about it and then it's like off. I haven't either. Also because it's clear that he definitely did all the things he actually said oh, to perfect. us years ago, and we were all just like, nah. <laughs> yeah, we'll make a boondocks episode about it it's all good and then no, it's real. <laughs> oh my god um fight for my life <laughs> that stranding is now available via pc game pass it's just the standard edition not the director's cut good on uh 505 clearly they did not uh retain the rights to the pc i cannot imagine playstation not Getting that, but hey, they didn't. So I, I'm assuming 505 is just like, oh, we're porting it to PC, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put it on Game Pass. So good on them. Um, everyone on PC, enjoy. The game is really fun. Uh, whatever you're expecting, it's wrong. So go play the game. <laughs> oh, fun. Legendary creator in video games is making a YouTube channel. Mashihiro Sakurai, the man behind Smash, Super Smash Brothers, a bunch of things like Kirby as well. Deep history with this gentleman is making a YouTube channel to talk about gaming, mainly game design. It's aptly named Mashihiro Sakurai on creating games. Very cool. I think he has three episodes up if you guys want to go check it out. Uh, oh, it's, wow. It's, I didn't know he had content for it. Mm-hmm, yeah, I, think he, I think one's like his intro, so really it's, I think it's only two episodes or something. But um, I have not had time to watch, but I will definitely be watching this for sure. Just to, get, just to pick at this man's brain. As will I. This is a quick one. Found out via G, uh, VGC, there will be a first ever Scottish Game Awards on August, uh, October 27th. You can nominate games online until September 20th. It's meant to uh, highlight um, the Scottish gaming landscape. Very cool. Game Do- of the year for the third year running, Brave the Video Game. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I was trying to think of a joke while writing this, and I was like, I got nothing. I don't know. They like kilts? Is that the right one? I think so. The original get killed in games, so it makes sense. <laughs> the, <laughs> the original <laughs> games from Slightly Mad Studios Project Cars One and Two will be delisted from storefronts October third and September twenty first, respectively. Via the game's official Twitter, this is quote due to expiring car and track licenses. End quote. Nothing uncommon there. If you'd like to snag them, make sure to buy them before the date's listed. I don't really care about this, but I wanted to highlight this because it's still impressive. Multiverses has suppressed 20 million players in about a month. This is according to the publisher Warner Bros., of course. Uh, insane. Not just free to play, but of course, when you s- Super Smash Brothers a game, people are going to want to check it out. They're going to want to main Arya Stark and get beat up by uh, 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 the guy LeBron from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, LeBron James dunks on people. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wait, Shaggy? <laughs> yes, Shaggy. Thank you. I was like, what's his name? I forget. Um, I, wow. I haven't the played from Scooby Doo. The guy from <laughs> but you knew what the fuck I was talking about, right? Um, true, true. <laughs> but aside from that, uh, I I kind of I almost kind of want to try it. I don't at the same time. I don't know. I don't have enough time. I feel like, but I I feel like I should just turn it on and touch it just to say I did. But um, I will say every time I see LeBron James do a combo, it looks fun. It does look fun. Oh yeah, the game looks like it's one of those games where I feel no gravitational pull, but I know if I try it, I will like it. So one of these days I will inevitably. I like to start the show kind of with a question to my co-host, and this is, of course, what have you been playing, Emmett? Um, to be honest with you, I've been playing too much. I've been making a lot of content, just doing a bunch of stuff that isn't actually playing a game. But I have been playing um, some small things. I put in like 30 minutes into Midnight Fight Express, which just came out on Game Pass. Um, that is the other game that came out on Tuesday that I've been heavily anticipating for a while. Uh, and Midnight Fight Express is very good. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's like a kind of melee beat 'em up type game. Whoa, uh, isometric. Hotlight Miami, um, right? Uh, you know what people say, Hotline Miami? It is not quite because uh. Hotline Miami is all about like you die instantly and you're using guns and it's very quick and fast paced. This is also quick and fast paced, but think like. I would say it's the combat system of every fighting melee game you've played. So it kind of plays like Batman, but also a little bit like Sleeping Dogs, but also a little bit like, I don't know, God of War. Like it has mechanics. It has the parry from uh, from the Sleeping Dogs and the Batmans of the world. And it has like the finishers of something like a God of War where you hold the circle over their head. Um, like it has all these elements mixed into one. And then they build on top of that as you play through the game. Um, I played a demo for this a while back for the YouTube channel, VGU.TV, and I loved the demo. Like, I had already been interested in the game, but once I got hands-on, I was like, oh, this plays super smoothly. Right. This is super engaging. Like, I'm all about it. I haven't played enough into the full game to get past where I even played in the demo, um, but I'm going to beat this game. I am looking forward to playing some more. I was going to play some more last night, but I fell into a different game entirely, which I'll talk about very quickly. Um, that was Balloons Tower Defense Six. <laughs> what did you just say to me? Time. Balloon Tower Defense Six. Yeah, not even balloons, just balloons. Balloons Tower Defense Six. It is a classic franchise. It, it's it's probably a game most people played on like browsers back in the day. It's a big like miniclip.com, congregate.com, all those websites for all the flash games. It's a big one on those. Eventually, it made it to mobile. Eventually, Whoa. and. The only reason I picked it up is because I I bought it on Steam a while ago and I bought it on my phone separately later on. But I was looking for a game because Fortnite Dragon Ball Z crossover happened. We're playing a lot of Fortnite, kind of tired of Fortnite right now. So I said, I want to play something where my progress isn't stuck on the phone and I want to play it in bed. And turns out the Steam version of Balloons Tower Defense 6 has cross save with the mobile version. So I said, excellent hooked all that stuff up and i've been playing on my phone uh the last five or not five more like four or three nights and uh yeah i just played until i fall asleep and it's it's a good time if you like tower defense it's 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 popping those buttons definitely i have two things to say and i've remained quiet because i wanted you to finish um one never say emmett is not vast in his ability to play different games you talk about two <laughs> games that literally could not be any different uh, you bring up Balloons Tower Defense 6, which I'm watching right now, and Midnight Fight Express. Um, second, uh, Midnight Fight Express looks like visual stimuli, the game. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a lot of colors happening all at once, but uh, it looks fun. I did get I did get uh, very addictive to these kind of tower defense things, kind of like Plants vs. Zombies. And, and uh, there was an old yeah. South Park game I played a long time ago, I think on the 360. I don't even remember what it's called, but that also was a tower I defense that was fun. Yeah, that yeah. I, I liked that too. So this is this thing looks crazy, and also when you say it's tied to your phone, that that's very compelling as well because you just keep playing um, on two mm -hmm. separate platforms. Um, but I will be checking out Midnight Fight Express. This is really cool. I don't know how I let this pass by the radar. This looks really cool. I like this. It's almost like Sifu isometric, but like oh yeah, little People bit of Hotline like, Miami, but like it's it's really cool. 
I think the Hotline Miami vibe is just coming from the fact that it's top down. And the Maybe. Music and I'm just, yeah, like, yeah that's, that's a good point. Yeah. 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 I think everything else about it, it has more in common tone wise with my friend Pedro. Because the same guy uh, who did the music for that did the music for this one. Yeah. So um, that comparison is there. And yeah, it's just very satisfying combat. Very satisfying. It's not like RPG progression, but every time you beat a level, you get a skill point. Looks like a, like a little skill tree kind of thing, yeah. Oh my god, the skill tree is crazy. Yeah, like it's a when lot. When I first started playing, I was like, oh, this is a kind of basic skill tree. But by the end of it, you're able to do the thing from Batman where you hit the X button to punch, and it just zips to the person across the room. Oh, nice. Like, you're unlocking that. There's like a grapple rope you can use to throw enemies around. Like, it gets crazy. And I'm very excited to play more. Oh my god, yeah, there's like... Tw- over 20 skills on this tree jesus no i will yeah. be playing this you said it's on xbox right yeah it's on it's on it's on everything it's I on steam it's on it looks like yeah uh, it's on steam but uh it's on game pass specifically so if you have I oh go oh my god perfect perfect yeah perfect i, I, I cannot buy something great <laughs> uh what have i been playing i went back to destiny 2 to play the new season i'm having a great time um Getting ready for the new raid that's coming out uh, tomorrow, which was King's Fall, which is actually a reprised Destiny 1 raid. And I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. Aside from that, there's not really been much else because I had um I had something happen over the weekend. Had death in the family. Had to take care of that. Uh, oh, so I've kind of... No, it's okay. Uh, I've been taking care of that. So really, I've only had time to really, when I got back, I played like Destiny. I picked it up, watched the showcase. Had a great time. It was nice to... Uh, Think about something else for a few days and it was i can't wait this season is definitely way way better than last season last season was actually so bad i had to stop playing i was just like i i, I need a break so i just i just was like you know what i sat it down i was like i'll see you next season like like this is definitely not fun so just stop playing and and that's yeah that's that's really it i we uh I, oh since you're on the show i will update you i watched inglorious bastards great time yeah it's a great time good movie it was a great time Hell yeah a great time me and my Fucking wife both confused wild. because we were remembering in the commercials like when it was like coming out we were like i thought this was like kind of comedy and I, like i and it completely threw me a loop it's it's silly but it's not comedy for sure but it was uh they have fun it, with it, but at the yeah. end of the day, the subject matters. So is, matter. Yeah, it's very serious. It was um, it was very good. Uh, it was really, <laughs> really good. I had such, I had such a fun time. It's basically like tension the movie almost. Like oh hell like, yeah, like like it's oh, like God. almost every scene is like. <laughs> and but and uh, mm-hmm. I'll I'll say this. I don't. I guess I won't spoil the stuff. But um, uh, the uh, what was it? Um, the uh, uh, cream. Well, we'll, I'll never look at cream the same ever again. (laughs) And then the bar and the bar scene is. Oh, yeah. It's up. Just insane. Just incredible scenes. That's Quentin Tarantino for you. He will light a fuse and that shit won't blow for years. (laughs) Oh, so good. So good. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And then that. Oh, Oh, yeah. The whole three finger. Three fingers. Uh, Oh, God is so good. Glad you're checking that list off. You got a you got a lot of fun ahead of you. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> something that wasn't on the list, but my wife wanted to watch. We watched Morbius, which was <laughs> fair enough. I can't even say anything. I I haven't seen it, so I can't. I can only talk so much shit. It I was. Uh, it definitely was not as bad as people said, but it was not. It's not a good movie. I was expecting yeah. trash, and that's not what it was. I've seen I've seen way more worse movies than that. Let's start with Rumor Roundup. <laughs> Let's start with Rumor Roundup. <laughs> Thanks to a report from Deadline. We're going to be talking a lot about Deadline, by the way. And there seems to be a Days Gone film in the works. Outlander star Sam Hugwan, Hugin, Hugin, is being eyed for the main role for Deacon St. John. Sheldon Turner is set to adapt to the film. Not a huge film guy, as you know, uh, Emmett, but seeing this i'm like okay that's cool weird that it's not sam whitworth because he's literally the voice of the character um and the likeness and okay. the likeness yeah he's modeled after him too lots of weird decisions yeah. first off already but days gone was a cool setting although i don't know how you would differentiate yourself with all the other zombie stuff that happened over the last 10 years but I, it looks like playstation is heavily going into movies right now so as we yeah, will get into in a I- second 
this is very much so a weird choice, but I do feel like Days Gone is one of those things where it's only fe- it only feels derivative to us because The Last of Us is literally from the same publisher, mm. the same platform and everything. I think when you take it out of the video game realm, put it in the movies realm, I can't think of many zombie motorcycle movies. Like that's a good the point. The thing I can think of is uh what is it? Zombie Land and that's not really about motorcycles. I think so, if they heavily go into like the MC culture maybe that yeah, maybe you get like the Sands of mm-hmm. Sons of Anarchy which is which is how they pitched the game originally, but like like a Sands of Anarchy meets like the Walking Dead type thing. I think you, I think yeah. you could get a good movie. Uh it, it, at this point it's just like, all right, I'll just wait and see cuz we had a pretty okay movie with Uncharted, like it was fine. So now we we'll got to see the next one to really see if they're like really behind this or not. Yeah, I'm not watching this movie though. It's not for me. <laughs> I'll say that. We'll be shocked if I do. I might. I don't know. This is like in like th- three or four years we'll get this movie. So who knows? Exactly. Sticking with movies, Deadline has also reported there will be a Gravity Rush movie in the works. Anna Maestro, which is from the Secret Society of Secondborn Royals, is attached to direct the film. From a script written by Emily Jerome, Panopticon, which I heard good things about. Um, cool. Uh, excited about this. I did see Iso Christian from Popcorn Pod retweet this and say, "Please make it animated." And I was like, "If they make this live action, I feel like you're definitely missing the point." I would love this to also be animated in a anime esque type situation. But again, yeah. uh, I don't even know the story of Gravity Rush, so I have no idea if it's going to relate to a movie. You know what? I, I did play a couple hours of Gravity Rush, but I'm forgetting all of it now. But um, Gravity Rush is just it's an IP rife for so much potential in general. That's why people want a third game so bad. Um, so it's really nice to see they're doing something with it. It kind of upsets me in the case of both of these days gone Gravity Rush that you're you won't make the game, but you'll give the rights for someone else to do the work to make a movie. It's a little annoying. Weird. Definitely but, weird. But at the well, yeah, very weird. But at the same time, I could easily see a big I could see Gravity Rush being a big thing if they do make it animated and they do like treat it and make it look like the games themselves. That could blow up and that could lead to a third game. I think that could really work out. Days Gone, I just can't see that being like, what, is it in the Wild Hogs universe? Like, come on. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that exploding. I liked that movie. Uh, yeah. Wild Ho- I don't hate Wild Hogs. It's just weird that it exists at all. <laughs> I haven't watched that since I think 2007. I think is when I watched it or something. I don't know. But probably in the same boat. I remember as a child being like, "It's a good movie." That was a child, so I have no idea. What the I remember fuck as I was a child thinking. being like, "Why is the guy from Fargo and yeah. Martin Lawrence here?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, again, sticking with Deadline. Another PlayStation adaption is in the worst. This is by Steve uh, Blackman. He will be developing a TV adaptation of Horizon Zero Dawn and the um, Umbrella Academy showrunner, which is Blackman, sorry, um, will be helming it. Cool. Another thing where I'm like, all right, we'll have to see. I do think Horizon Zero Dawn is a much better TV show than it would be a movie. Certainly. uh, Because you get to go into all the tribes and how interlaced everything is and get into the culture. That's that'll be really cool. So I mean, I'll I'll ring the chorus that I've been seeing online about this. I really hope this show is about the events leading up to the apocalypse rather than oh. all all the tribes and whatnot, because especially with Netflix, I'm not saying they're cheap necessarily, but they probably want to save a little money, probably easier to have like industrial settings and all these people going through science rooms, or whatever, rather than investing in the set design and going outside to go film all these things and then the cgi for the dinosaurs like that could get expensive real quick i think it might be smarter to just say here's everything that happened beforehand and also you don't taint the legacy of the games that much that way either so yeah we'll see what they do but i think that's a better idea i agree they also announced that umbrella academy is getting its fourth and final season and i'm very excited about that that's nothing to do with games i just wanted to bring that up I respect the Umbrella Academy. It's fun. Shout out to Elliot. Yeah. I uh, what I loved about the um, uh, El- how they transitioned to Elliot in the show is like it just happens and then they just don't bring it up again. And I was like, oh, okay, that's great. They didn't make oh, it a thing. Okay. They didn't make it like a thing. <laughs> it like, kind of happens for like twenty minutes, and then it's like, all right, let's not talk about it again. I was like, I was, I was like, that's that's awesome. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. 
This is kind of a long one, and who knows what happened here, but let's Oz, cover it. Oh. Do you want to add one more adaptation yes. to the list? Please. I just saw something on Twitter. Please. One more adaptation. We don't have enough. We have God yeah, of War, right? Ghost of Tsushima, uh, the three I just listed. Uh, uh, Gran Turismo is getting a movie. The fuck? What is it? Yeah, Gran Turismo. We got a lot of them. So I just saw a tweet that, uh, oh, God. Okay. Uh, Bioshock. Francis Lawrence to direct Netflix's feature adaptation of the popular video game with Michael Green writing the script. Uh, and who are those people? Uh, it looks like uh, Hunger Games director is Francis Lawrence. Uh, so that's something, I guess. And the person writing the script, what did they work on? Um, they also did some work for Hunger Games. So I don't know. Maybe not the Hunger Games and Bioshock don't mix in my head, but no dystopias yeah boom. i guess good point <laughs> they didn't really go in too much about the dystopian nature they just kind of did things in the dystopia but i a bioshock movie is cool but i don't know i'm i feel like i'm a little um selfish with bioshock i, I want people to play the game like like okay. i don't want it to go to other stuff what's going on okay i i actually misspoke so yes francis lords did direct uh hunger games catching fire mm -hmm. also i am legend and also slumberland oh i like i am Legend a lot me so too that's good news and then michael green actually wrote logan blade runner 2049 and death on the nile so that's a pretty that's good that's pretty good legacy. that's pretty good yeah so, two pretty great yeah those are some good filmmakers there so yeah i, I might watch that that might be good fingers crossed very much so very much so also kind of sticking with acting, kind of. Lots of discourse okay. this week centered around one very big rumor. That Ubisoft was in the works on a Blade game, of course centered around the popular vampire, vampire killing hunter Blade. Now this rumor has some backing. YouTuber Joe Raptor was the first to make note of a recent Instagram post by Edwin Gaffney, who starred in Detroit Become Human and recently posted a picture of himself and actor Alex Martin. Quote, that's a wrap, end quote. Gaffney wrote next to the picture, Quote, it is always a pleasure working on great projects, but what makes it even better is working with great people. Thank you, Alex Martin, for the talent and energy you bring to the set. You rock, which are followed by the hashtags, quote, mocap, sorry, hashtag mocap, hashtag performance capture, hashtag Ubisoft, and hashtag Ubisoft games. The next photo shows the words Marvel on a board and the name B. Tariq, which lines up with the name Basim Tariq, who will be directing the Blade movie set for release November 2023. To add to this rumor, Gaffney was also holding a sword in the first picture, which is, of course, a blade. Ubisoft did comment, trying to dispel the rumor, quote, Sorry to slice up the rumors, we're not making a blade game, but we can't wait to see what our friends at Marvel Studios are cooking up with next year's movie. End quote. I don't know what to make of this. I feel like at first I went, okay, clear cut, they said they're not going to work on it. I can't imagine they'd lie, because that'd be weird if they come out in like two years and be like, hey, we lied. We actually are making a blade game. Yeah, they're not David Jaffe. You can't do that on the main account. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you can't do that on the main. But I, uh, for some reason, I don't know. I had like skepticism a little bit. I was like, Whoa. that's a lot to be like, we're not doing it though. So like, what is it? Maybe did the is he confused that he's not working with Ubisoft or, or maybe they like, like how, used their app studio and he didn't realize it's a good, it wasn't an actual movie mm, good point in movie something like that. And Ubisoft, uh, they do sometimes rent out mocap studios if they if they mm -hmm. are the owner. So that's that's yeah. actually not crazy to believe. Maybe they had some mo capture, and he just got confused and was like, "Oh my god, it's a game or something." I don't know. Um, honestly, I what like the same, the same. yeah, go ahead. Oh no, uh, what what made me not believe it actually more instead of supporting it was the director's name on like a random clipboard. I was like, why would his name be attached to any of this? Because uh, he's not going to go from directing a Marvel movie straight to be like, all right, I'm making a game now. So I don't know what to make of that. I, I'm, I'm going to say it's not true, probably. Yeah, I'm going to say either it's not true that Ubisoft is making it or the entire thing is false. Because the whole thing I just said with Ubisoft maybe renting out the studio could be the case. But also just the fact that like the film director usually has nothing to do with the actual game. Especially in this generation where there's no, we don't do tie in games anymore. If they're going to make a Blade game, they're just going to make it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Agreed on that too. That's, that's something I didn't bring up yet. I don't think they'll be like, all right, let's synergize. Let's get a game going. I, yeah, I, I don't I, think they would care, honestly. Exactly. So I think, I think that is just a random Marvel logo that maybe has a lot of different directors and such on it. 
and then it just happened that that frame had just his name on it for that instance. I feel like it's one of those like, oh, sign your name on the wall type thing. Um, so I don't I haven't seen the picture to get the full context of it, but I can't imagine all these things connect in the way that people are hoping. Um, I'd love to see a blade game, but I just don't think this is the context for it right now. So also, I believe he has not deleted it. When I checked uh, on the story, he I'm pretty sure it was still up. So if he was under NDA, he would have deleted it. So exactly, exactly. I don't think this is real. Let's start the show for the week. Of course, as always, stop me when you hear something interesting, Emmett, because we're going to be talking about Opening Night Live, which happened this week. Jeff Keighley's event that finishes off the Summer of Conference and also happens to land right before the Germany-based Gamescom, sort of E3 for Europe, to explain very simply. The show was two hours, just like the other show Jeff Keighley produces. So let's get into what was announced and revealed. We've talked about this before. Ex um, Grand Theft Auto uh, writers, I believe, are on this and devs. Um, everywhere developed by build a rocket boy showed a quick teaser trailer dated for 2023 dune awakening by funcom uh asterisk by that because i'll be bringing that up later hogwarts legacy got a new trailer gearbox's new tales from the borderlands got a trailer coming october 21st We're very nervous about that gearbox game me too <laughs> everything i saw i was like eh. not, uh... it, not it doesn't look bad it just looks not like the last game that's what i'm saying that's like... enough Scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Gearbox is the one make like they're they're making it. So like, are, is this gonna be good? I don't know. We haven't seen a lot, which means probably not. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Word song by something wicked. Game. Oh, I should have noted this at the beginning. This is not in order actually. Um, I barely watched this thing, so and I was not about to rewatch all of this again to to like Fair. take notes. So this is actually a write up from Polygon, and then I sourced who developed each game by looking everyone up. Where it's on by something with the game. Dead Island 2 shows its face after eight years. Coming February 3rd, 2023. PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox One, Xbox Series X. Yay, very excited for Dead Island 2. I can't. Uh, I So, okay, you're excited. I, I love this. I actually had a, a back and forth with my former co-host Alex over this game. And I want to ask you the same question. Does this have any chance of being good? Oh, definitely. It it has a chance of being good because it seems like it's been so long since they announced it that so little of that original foundation is left that this is pretty much a brand new house. Like so, Polygon it, actually started as well. Polygon had an interesting write up um, that I would implore people to go read. Uh, that basically describes what happened with this game. Essentially, what happened: a bunch of studios got it. They actually named the studios too. But four years ago, this landed into Dan Buster's hands. And four years ago from now, they've been working on this game. Apparently, they said from the ground up, they started from scratch and started making Dead Island 2. My worry is the name Dan Buster. If you don't know who Dan Buster is, they have made a game. Homefront the Revolution, which is, or sorry, uh, Homefront 2. Um, no, it's Homefront the Revolution. Is it, there's no two. There's no two? Yeah. I thought I looked yeah, up that was the second like the one. Home for the Revolution. It is the second one, but they took off the two. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Why did I think it was the second one? And also, they did some um, uh, work on. They did some help with a game. I'm already blanking on the name that it came out recently. But uh, aside from the say, I have little faith that Dan Buster is about to come out and make a great game. I hope that I'm wrong. But having the name Home Fret the Revolution tied to your studio and then nothing else since then, really, that's very compelling. Makes me a bit worried. I am literally on the opposite. I'm on the opposite side, but not that far. Where, honestly, it's kind of similar to the Saints Row conversations being had right now, where I expected that to be around a seven or eight, and now it's coming out as fives and sixes. I think you're Except on your the game five or six. Yeah, well, it's yeah. an eight point five. <laughs> exactly. Whoa! Which, hey, Andrew Reiner, he likes those types of games, so I wasn't too surprised from his review. But uh, also, NPR gave a good review, which is weird. NPR reviews games now. Didn't Very you? weird. Um, anywho, I think this is the split right here between us, where you're thinking Dead Island is probably going to be five or six range. I'm thinking it's going to be seven or eight range because yes, uh, what was it? Uh, Homefront: The Revolution didn't make a lot of waves when it came out. That is very true. But if you did play the game, the game is actually pretty solid. It, it was broken at launch, added, though. It was broken. It was launch, pretty broken. Is, so I don't know if that, regardless of the content of the game, I would argue that it doesn't matter, right? The game was fixed eventually. Because eventually, the thing, yeah, bad the game, question, right? 
the game got updates and everything. If you play that game right now today, especially with the frame rate boost on Xbox, it is a pretty solid game, especially with the DLC. Like it tells a pretty decent story. Um, I watched Noah Caldwell Gervais' video on it, uh-huh. and I also played the game myself for okay. a couple hours as well. So I understand that the game is like solid. Okay. So I expect Dead Island Two to be at least solid. Will it be great? That's up for them to decide. But I, I, there's a. It can only be so bad in my head, and only so bad is not very bad at all. If it's anything like uh, Homefront Revolution. Okay, you brought up a bunch of good points. First off, I, I did forget it was Chorus. It was they um they didn't develop it. They just oh, supported yeah. the uh, support. They did some support dev work um since they work closely with that studio. That um, so th- so they work under Deep Silver, which of course is under Embracer Group. Bingo. We just got Saints Row, which. At, we can argue about the quality, whatever of the game. Very minimum, there are plenty of bugs in the game, at least a plentiful enough. So that doesn't give me any more optimism on this game because it's not, you know, you can't really draw a correlation to these, but it is pretty close to uh, the family of studios. And in, when you show me Dead Island 2's coming out in February, from Dan Buster under Embracer Group, which just let Saints Row launch, I get I still get worried. Um, what I are we just gonna get another bucket mess like we we just got with Saints Row? I don't know. Home, like you said, Home for uh, the Revolution came out and that was buggy mess. Is this gonna be a retread of the grounds of 2016 with the home front? I don't know. I don't know. But I'll, when I'll I say- saw Dan Buster and I and I saw Dead Island Two, I was like, okay, so this is this is now a maybe. No, no, sh- far shot from a guarantee that would be good. But I, okay. I'm buying this game. I have to. I mean, it's been yeah. eight years. Like I have to. I have to just to say I do. It was like um, it was like when Final Fantasy 15 finally came out, and it was like you have to buy this just to say that you were involved in this tumultuous game development, and you were playing the end result of this mess that turned into a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I don't quite expect this to be a buggy mess. I know there were. Development issues with Homefront that kind of led to, you know, that game being what it was at launch. Right. And then also, um, I don't know if there were development issues with Saints Row, but it clearly looks like it in retrospect. They delayed it and everything, and it still came out that way. So will Dead Island 2 be the same way? I don't know, but I can tell you right now, if Dead Island is the 7 or 8 out of 10 that I'm expecting it to be, all of that just barely goodwill that comes from making an 8 out of 10 game, washed away if it's buggy on launch. Because no one will remember, oh, this is solid. They will remember only the bugs. If you're not making an incredible experience that the bugs are overshadowed, that, that overshadows the, the bugs, then the bugs are going to be all people remember. So they need to make sure it's technically sound if they're not going to be aiming for a 9 or 10. Agreed. There are people that will never touch Cyberpunk, regardless of how good it is now, because of how it launched. Um, I went back to it just because I was like, I wonder if this is good now. And it was. I, I, lo- I love the game, but Will that be the story of Dead Island 2? We'll have to see. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Fingers crossed for him. Me too. I, I, again, never want a game to be bad. Always want them to be good. Callisto Protocol by Striking Distance Studios coming December 2nd still. Got a couple more gameplay trailers. Looks, looks great. Can't wait. And it's going to be weird playing this and then a month later playing Dead Space Remake. Uh, remake. <laughs> Very weird. I don't think that thing's coming out then. I don't think so either. Wait. Yeah, they keep saying that, but they won't show actual non-in-development gameplay. Like, eh, that thing's coming out, like, June. And they're showing it, like, very in-development gameplay. Like, you can still see, like, mm-hmm. markups and things on the screen. I was like, ooh, okay. I, I don't know if that's true, but... Again, we'll see again. New, new update for Genshin Impact. You can tell they paid some money to put that there. Yeah. Oinkai <laughs> Star Rail by Horrorvorce, the same people who make Genshin Impact. Got a little teaser trailer. Looks very cool. I will probably never play it, but it looks really pretty. Same here. I love the art style, but I'm not going to touch these types of games. I'm just, it's not going to happen. But good on people who like it. It's very popular. Very popular. For sure. This was very cool. I kind of liked this. This was Friends versus Friends, a card based shooter. This is by Brainwash Games. This looks re- actually really cool. It, 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 yeah. it kind of struck like a lot of things that I like about the game because at first I was like what is this and then they have a gun and like you have a deck and it's quickly going through cards and you're like doing various motions I am assuming um, that are based on the cards that you're pulling very very cool I want to play this as soon as it comes out 
yeah, I love cute first person shooters. Give me more of them. I will take this and eat it up. Gotham Knights was shown for the 78th time with a new date of October 21st. So it actually got moved up a week. I'm very excited for this game. I just want it to come out so I know if it's good or not. Please just come out yeah. so I know what happens. Okay. You want to talk about an eight out of ten? <laughs> <laughs> That's what this game. It does have. Like. It has it written all over it too. Like just eight, eight all over. It. Like mm -hmm. oh my god, I can't wait to love a lot of it and hate the other parts. Like I know it's gonna happen. Rip the bandaid off. I can't wait to play as Nightwing and back. I will say though. I, this is a problem for me because I, I said it on Twitter, like this trailer actually got me interested. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that Harley was going to be a bigger part of this game. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't think she was in the game. So it's cool to see that she's like even back into her alter ego with the psychiatrist stuff. Like, that's really cool. But I I'm of the minority. All the Batman games to me are about eight out of ten. Like. I don't love them to the degree that everyone else does. Not to say that they're bad. They're not oh, awful I, games in any way. I enjoy every moment with them, except for some of the tank stuff towards the end of night. But this game just seems like it is even lower quality than those games. And I already yeah. thought those games were pretty good rather than amazing. So we're gonna. I still got to wait and see on this one. Uh, when it comes out, I'm going to see what the reviews say and everything. But I feel like I'm just going to snatch this one up for 20 bucks in six months instead. What it lacks is the animations. If it had another year of just animation works where it looked like your hits really hit versus where the MMO kind of thing is where you punch and then like you kind of do damage and then there's the a recoil. there's a stark the uh, or a stock thing of a recoil and then you just kind of do that over again. If if it was more of Arkham where you felt like you're uh it had a sense of kineticism when you were fighting something like when you hit someone you could feel like as uh, Nightwing, like you feel your baton hit the face, you could feel like the head move and like you're very related into that action when you're doing it. I feel like this would be like we wouldn't even be questioning how good this game is. The 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 major drawback, I think, is it's going to feel like an online game. You're going to hit X a lot. You're going to hit square or whatever. You're going to hit a bunch of these things. It looks like you can't counter in the game. Ooh, which are you are you kidding me bro that was one of the best things that, about the arkham games and you can't counter what they have is perfect dodges so like you can do a perfect dodge and like i guess hit them at the same time i don't know but you know what perfect dodge is all right i like bayonet i like platinum combat but is that gonna work in a batman context eh, get, we'll see. that's what i'm saying like i love my some of my favorite parts was like kind of letting someone hit me so i would counter and then do like a quick combo and get a... mm. i'm just gonna bitch I know, let's move on. <laughs> Where winds meet. I did not find um, a lot about this, but it looked cool. It's a quick teaser trailer. Yeah. Cool. It looks like uh, Naraka Blade Point, but single player, and I want to play it. Yes. Yes. I, I saw it, and I was like, that was the teasiest teaser. You, did, you barely told us the name. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, cool. All right. Park Beyond by Limbic Entertainment. This is all uh, for everyone that's the Thrillville fans out there, all that stuff. Hey sink into park beyond that looks uh, right up your guys's alley not gonna lie when you said throwville i thought you said trillville for a second and i was like why is he referencing some cut on this on this podcast right now is there I, a bed squeaking in the background i i wish um is there a bed squeaking? i wish um i did so i could see like your reaction because i feel like because you're such a good ghost you would have been like rolling with it like yeah i could see where you would draw <laughs> draw that conclusion <laughs> yep Lies of P launching day one on Game Pass developed by NeoWiz. This looks awesome. Oh my god. This looks really cool. And it's coming day one on Game Pass. I mean, come on. This looks great. Can't wait for it. Um, it's uh I forgot to write it down, but I believe it's early next year. It might be yeah, just 2023, to, actually. Can't wait to slice people up as Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> Cause Pinocchio in this game looks like fucking Timothy Chalamet. It, it definitely is an interesting look for everything. And I, I, I can't wait. Yeah, certainly. Phantom Hellcat is the name of the game. This is by Ironbird Creations. This was pretty wild. I I kind of tuned out for this one. It looked cool, but I don't have much to say about it. Yeah, it was a 30 second trailer, but it looks cool. It, it's the stylish action combat that I love. So I want to see more of it before I really get excited about it. But it looks dope. Coffee Stains is Goat Simulator 3 coming November 17th. This is one of those early uh, YouTube days where like this game was huge. So like. It's back. I imagine we'll be doing pretty much the same thing again. Enjoy. Very funny. Oh, yeah. Now with friends. <laughs> now with friends. 
Return to Monkey Island coming September 19th to Switch and PC. Can't wait for this. I will be buy, playing, buying and playing this day one. Uh, okay. I cannot wait for Return to Monkey Island. I played the original ones when they came to 360. It's a great games. Really good. Mm. Really good. Crazy. Uh, 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 one of the few point and clicks that I like. Not usually a huge fan of those, but I like this one. I respect it. This was what I, I couldn't believe this. The Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game, was announced by Terravision Games. It is, uh, it is a Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the video game. I will not play this game, but I love that it exists. <laughs> I think I do I too. Think that's the most absurd thing. I think I do yeah. too, because when I saw it, I was like, out of everything, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game, game. Because I feel like. A create because I believe it was the director from Friday the Thirteenth, the game that came out um a few years ago, is making this game. I feel like someone was like, "I want to make this," like this. I feel like this wasn't handed to someone. Someone went, "I want to make a Killer Clowns from Outer Space game," and they went and they did it. And I, you know what? Good for you. You can tell you can tell how obscure it is because you can watch the movie for free on YouTube. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it tells you everything you need to know. Squanch's games high on life showed a surprisingly weak trailer, uh, according to myself, coming December 13th. Um, so I have loved every aspect of this game. That trailer was surprisingly, surprisingly bad to the point where I almost feel like it was like a dev cutout to like yeah, showcase say, some of the some of the weapons and things. And at that point, maybe just don't show up. Maybe just don't come. You're making a solid point in that it wasn't a I it was it was such a bad trailer that it wasn't even a trailer. It was just a gameplay snippet. Yeah, it was like a piece. It's like it's like they literally got like a knife and cut out a piece mm -hmm. of the game and they just laid it there. And we're like, all right, play with like no context or anything. And it just it felt really off. I've loved everything about the game. They actually just released some um, another gameplay trailer, I believe, yesterday. I might be wrong on that. Uh, and it's a proper trailer and it's a yeah it's a it, it was good it still looks good i'm excited but like this was like whoa why does this look really bad like out of nowhere you know what? i'll say this because i think it's only bad in context of the whole presentation of the show but like me seeing that gameplay snippet that was the most interested i've been in high on life yet where literally since they announced it i've been like oh that looks pretty cool but this that gameplay snippet i was like oh no i'm playing this as soon as it comes out now. me too like this yep. is fucking awesome game pass just as a reminder on game pass day one but um exactly. yeah I, I, I still can't wait for this i'm just saying i i'm I, when i was watching i was like wow i'm getting bored in that i should never say that during a trailer like jesus that was mm -hmm. that was i was like Ugh. but again they are still saying funny things they're they're but it, I can't wait for all of my weapons to talk to me. The guy, the knife was hilarious. Like he just takes oh out and he's just crazy. I'll stab, <laughs> I'll stab his asshole. <laughs> Let me stab him. I was like, whoa, this is all. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> gonna be good. Gonna be good. Moving out to by Team 17 coming 2023. This is cool. Uh, I, yeah, be cool. Overcooked fans <laughs> enjoy moving out to, which is I'm one of them, but I don't play this game. <laughs> and an Emmett ass reveal. <laughs> Lords of the Fallen, which is another game that's called Lords of the Fallen, so they're, they're just calling it Lords of the Fallen again from Hexworks. I think it's like a, I think it's a Fast and the Furious type deal where they like it's the same title but they take out the the. That's a good point. I think it was. The, yeah. uh, oh, uh, anyways, it's <laughs> but it's a sequel as well. So keep yeah. that in mind. This yeah. is a sequel to that. Original. Yeah, it, it is not technically a reboot, which I thought it was actually. I was like, oh, they're rebooting this, whatever the other game was based off. So, no, it is a continuation. PS5, PC, and Series X. It looked cool. I played, actually, the original one and noped out very quickly. I could not get into that. And that was, like, at peak Dark Souls. I think Dark Souls 3 came around at that time, if I'm remembering our, uh, my time right. And it was just, like, a... It was, like, showing the difference of, like, oh, yeah. Th th like, this is the pinnacle, and this is, like, someone trying to imitate. And it just didn't work for me. Well, that was one of deck 13's first games we're going to talk about them more later so we'll save we'll, i'll keep that in the chamber <laughs> stranded alien dawn developed by hayman Mont. early access on pc in october looks like a great pc game that uh, you couldn't really tell what's going on but it looks like a lot of pc people would like that it looks kind of like managed it looks like brighter rust yeah i guess so good point yeah. uh, under the waves 
Parallel Studios and Quantic Dreams are up next, coming 2023 PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox One, Series X. So, the thing I want to say about this one, real quick, it was very hilarious when uh, GF was was pitching to this game, and he was like, "You're probably gonna like this." When we got a new IP coming from, well, just check it out. And then Quantic Dream busts up. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, you fucking knew. You knew. Especially in Europe where they're like way more known. Than way America. more. Yeah. You probably would have gotten some booze in that crowd. You would have been like, eh. <clears throat> I will say, um, Jeff Keighley, um, I never, I, you know, I never try to be mean on the show, but I'm saying like, like the audience was not with you. So like, stop going to them. Cause they, they, he was oh, like, yeah. he was like, yeah, who likes this? And never, everyone was like, si- just dead silence. Yeah, like Justin Rowland, crickets. <laughs> Like, like, just scattered, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah and I'm like, God, I'm like, stop going to them, bro. I get it. I get it. Like, you want to try and save it? It wasn't working. So you just got to <laughs> dump them. Like, he's, it, the amount of times there was a silence when he was like, oh, okay. Anyways. <laughs> but um, yeah. this, this did look cool. And, and he is very cheeky, although I think sometimes it works to his detriment. Like this. I, I just think, like. If you're gonna like have commentary on the games industry, like I guess it's a little tongue in cheek when you do that, but also it's like eh, it comes across as wrong because you're like you're also using the like you still work you're with still them. working <laughs> with them. That this was my problem when they showed Activision games where like you talk shit about them at Game Awards and they're you're right back at it in the next thing. So it feels like you're you know when you say things it doesn't mean anything, but I don't honestly care. <laughs> I didn't I barely watched this thing to begin with, so I don't yeah yeah. But uh, I, I just to say really quick, this is the that. Subnautica people, just in case uh, you guys. Oh, are... yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why. Um, that's I, why I, look- I interrupted you, though. Please go ahead. Oh, no. I was just going to say, I feel bad for Parallel Studios because they, they, they have to be under the fucking umbrella of this. And I'm sure that's terrible. Eh, and they get. It doesn't look awful. It's just, no. I'm not touching a Quantic Dream anything, really. Eh, par- Parallel probably doesn't. Eh, their checks cash at the same place. I doubt they care. But well, maybe they do. True. Maybe they do. Time will tell. This is just hilarious. Sonic Frontiers coming on November 8th on Switch PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Series X. They fucking did it. I, I don't remember which show, but I said, please let... Because the, the, the release date leaked, I think, via Amazon or something. And I was like, please let that be real, because that means they have to go against God of War. Oh, that's that is amazing. This is everything I've ever wanted. Like, like someone, <laughs> someone is going to go... To their local GameStop, Best Buy, or whatever, and they're gonna pick up Sonic Frontier. Someone out there will do will do that and not buy God of War. And I find that's really funny to me. <laughs> All I want is for us to do the Animal Crossing Doom Eternal thing. Let's oh, see some Sonic. That's a good point. That's a good point. Those were amazing. That is a good point. Yeah, like a little point in like the internet where people just do fan art. Doom yeah. and Animal Crossing Twitter shared some too, which was really fun. They kind of got oh, into I it. Love that. Yeah, I want to see s- the cat with the red line over his eye. <laughs> I want to see Sonic. <laughs> I think his name is Biggs or something. I want to see Biggs yeah. the cat with like Sonic or Tails as Atreus <laughs> with a bow <laughs> and just like <laughs> just wandering the wilderness. That'd be great. <laughs> oh my god! You're yes, please. Atlas Fallen Deck 13 Interactive as a new game coming 2023 PC Series X PS5. This looks great. This I looks great. I am so ready for this. Yeah, this looks okay, good. We, got, we mentioned Deck 13 earlier. Yeah. Deck 13, I am now looking out for their games. I played The Surge 2. One of my favorite Souls likes ever. Or pro- It's just my favorite Souls like just top tier for me because I haven't played that many Souls likes. But that game's so great that I trust them with pretty much whatever they do. This game looks like it's going to be faster, kind of more, not quite platinum-ish, but way more flashy combat as well. Uh, you're sliding through the grass or sliding through the sand like Journey. Like, it just looks fucking awesome. Can't wait for it. Next year's going to be great. I uh, echo everything you said, although I didn't play The Surge. I'm just saying everything I saw from them just looks impressive, and I, I'm a little bit of a Deck 13 fan, so I like seeing them do stuff. Play The Surge too. It's good, everybody. I'll play it. I'll play it. Next up, this is a little bit more up my alley. Atlas Trials, Red Barrel, close beta later this year since it will be featuring multiplayer for the first time. Yep, I'll be playing this. Now, I will say my love of the franchise did wane a little bit with the latest uh, entry in the series. They tried to do like a semi, like open area type thing, and it just was not designed well. 
So they had some spots throughout the game that I just did not jive with just because it felt like they were forcing something rather than being inspired by a certain idea. Aside from that, though, I, I can't wait for Atlas Trials. This just looks awesome. Uh, I like Outlast. It's terrifying. Yeah, I will stay away, but I'll watch a video I say about it in a couple of years. <laughs> Moonbreaker by Unknown World, September 29th. Don't have much to say about this. I will say this one looks really cool. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like, oh, it's it's XCOM with a bunch of little figurines. And I think it, it, it kind of is cool how the figurines are in universe, just figurines. Like they spin and dazzle and do shit, but like they don't animate at all. And I think that's really cool. Um, will I play this? Probably not, but it just looks very endearing in a way that I really want to get behind. So yeah, shout out to that. Homeworld 3 coming first half of 2023, Gearbox and Blackbird Interactive. This looks kind of cool, but another one where I'm like, eh, this reminds me of one of the games where I'm like, that looks cool. And I never actually do anything or play it or something, but it looks cool. I'm sure a lot of people are excited for uh, the game. Shout out to those fans. <laughs> the Expanse, a Telltale series is coming summer 2023. No, I haven't watched The Expanse yet. I, this, it just kind of seems cool, but I think I'm going to have to uh, skip out on this one, which is the first time I've ever not played a Telltale series. It's just like the mm. subject matter just doesn't intrigue me. And also, Telltale does have something to prove. So this is more of them coming out and kind of proving to me that they're, they still got the stuff versus me just buying it just because it says Telltale on it. I mean, I will say they're getting some backup from Deck Nine, and everyone knows Deck Nine's been doing great with Life is Strange, so they kind of carried the Telltale torch forward, and now they're coming back to help out. So I really like that. I have never watched The Expanse, but I keep hearing it's a great show. I know my co-host on the Players Club podcast, Alan Muir, loves The Expanse, so they're very excited for this. Um, I probably won't play this... <clears throat> Probably won't play this just because I don't watch the show. I don't have an attachment. But if it is really good, like people keep saying, perhaps I'll come back around to it like I did with Tales from the Borderlands. There's some franchise where I don't care. But if you tell me a good story, I can be convinced. So we'll see what comes of it later on. Door for Mantic. Say building. Trying to figure out the, 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 the how to say that word. Yes. Door for Mantic. <laughs> which is a building strategy puzzle game. Not my thing, because it says puzzles. I'm not a big puzzle guy. It's coming to Switch September 29th. Good for everyone, but I will not be playing it. Yeah, looks cute, but once again, not for me either. Yeah. Scars Above. This is by Prim Prime Matter and Mad Head Games, which I can't say without laughing. Um, I'm childish. But uh, Scars Above... Toppy games. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> oh. oh my god okay okay oh. um <laughs> that's the clip to cut out yeah yeah that's gonna go on twitter um scars, <laughs> scars above um i had to look this up to remind myself it looks like i mean it looks a lot like returnal um uh, it's a uh, third-person action shooter combining the rewarding feeling of overcoming difficulty with a compelling, intricate story. I mean, it literally sounds like it. you're describing <laughs> uh, <laughs> Returnal. Yep. It looks very cool, though. I mean, if it if it is even 75% as good as Returnal, I mean, that's a great game, so I'll be playing it. I will say it's funny that Scars Above got shown off in that Prime Matter E3 showcase, and all mm. of us thought it was boring and janky looking, but you cut the right trailer together and you work on it for a few more months it can look cool. So I, it's a nice little redemption arc there I want to shout out. But yeah, I might play this. It's probably going to be same tier of like a Darksiders 3, if I'm honest. But <laughs> that, that's good enough for me. Yeah, like instead of Returnal being the triple A, this is like the, the two A's, but they're lowercase. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, okay, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Dual Sense Edge was announced. It's basically the Elite Controller, but for PlayStation, it's finally happening. They have given in. They're making an Elite Controller for PlayStation. It looks cool. Uh, nothing really else talked about. They gave you some slight things like, oh, you know, you'll be able to change the thumbsticks and things. These are things you can already do on the Elite Controller. I imagine just about everything is going to transfer over. Um, trigger stops, uh, customizable settings. It has multiple profiles, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I can't wait. I'll probably buy this. I'm a sucker for these things. I probably won't. I don't need it. <laughs> hmm. 
I have enough custom control. It's not very capitalistic of you, Emmett. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> You're talking to the person who spent ninety dollars on Saints Row. That's true. Book. That's true. Get out of my lawn. <laughs> and and you did and you did it with a smile too. You tweeted about it and everything. You're like, oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, that was a that was a tongue in cheek. Oh no, that's more of no. Like, I know. Oh, yeah. No, what have I done? Yeah. No. Definitely. That's how I read it too. I was the sunscreen bottle. <laughs> <laughs> like oh no, the dog has pulled down my trousers. Whatever <laughs> shall I do? Uh, oh no, my. What are you doing with the peanut butter? Hideo, <laughs> Hideo Kojima showed up and talked about his podcast and then left. And that's, that's what we're going to end this. I thought that was a perfect way of ending this. Hideo Kojima showed up. He was like, listen to my podcast. And then he left. It was really awesome. I, I wish I could do the same thing. Um, jokes aside, uh, I think that is really cool. He's actually dubbing his podcast, which is very wise, I think um to really uh market it to english speaking people uh very cool i don't have too too much else to say about this it's just i i kind of like that these kind of legends are starting to make things just for just for fun I, I don't know um if you've heard about this but it would be cool if uh do you know master classes those things oh yeah i'm aware of those yeah it'd be cool if they start getting some game people on there i again they could already have mm. So apologies if you're a fan of Masterclass and you're like, how dare you? Uh, but uh, Peter Molly, <laughs> <it's great. laughs> Imagine Peter Molly will do it. Um, but yeah, this was this is cool, and that is that was the show. That was everything showed at the very very, in my opinion, just like all right, this was par for the course. I guess I like I said, I kind of skipped out on it because I. I just couldn't care less because it was two hours. I'm like two hours. I had an already crazy week. So I was like, I don't, I can't really make time for this. So I watched a bit and then uh, recapped a lot of it. I do enjoy. And again, this is coming from someone who didn't watch it. It seemed like the commercials were a lot more well hidden. I will say that there are still commercials, but they seem to be more well hidden. Uh, I will bring up. Let's not forget level infinity or sorry, level infinite, um, which is basically Tencent. Uh, just with a different name. Um, really? Yes. Yeah. Look up um ten cent level infinite, and they that's how they hide who they are. But level infinite uh, showed off uh, a couple games. Uh, the games from Funcom. Uh, a couple other things, Warhammer things of that nature, and that just shows like that you know they pay. Uh, to get on the show. And uh, he was able to hide it a little bit better this time. So I, that's why I think people are a little more positive on here about this, uh, about this particular showcase. But huh. I didn't really love it, but I wasn't expecting to because I, I didn't like Summer Games Fest. It was way too long. I still feel like two hours is just way, it's just way too long. You should not have two hour showcases. And if you do, it should be a lot more chill than just like getting on there and and like having boom 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 but i do think this was better than summer games fest although to me that's not saying much mm. i feel like because you didn't watch this one all the way through but you did watch summer game fest all the way so through, i correct? yes so i sat through summer games fest now i would have watched this all the way through but again I had death of famous so i had to like watch oh, yeah. some of it and then i had to get the most of my information from breakdowns i watched basically an hour i want to say because I caught, I think, I think I was like in the middle and I watched her. I, I, I don't quite remember. I, no, no, no. See, I, I no, I, I finished the show. So I, I was probably, I'll probably half to two thirds ish around there. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I only asked that because like I, for me, I thought this was about on par with mm. uh, Summer Games Fest, but at the same time, I was more positive on Summer Games Fest back then. Gotcha. Than- people are talking about it so for me it feels like oh this is hitting the same amount of exciting games or just cool stuff um I- i'll say if you're gonna have two hours it's kind of, it's a hard pill to swallow if it's two hours of double a games which to a large degree that's what this is um it's, it's hard to watch this for two hours and there's no last of us there's no god of war anything crazy like that but all the or all a lot of these games look cool, with the exception of stuff like Dune Awakening, which is like, ooh, that looks cool. Oh, Survival MML, goodbye. Um, another Level Infinite game. Cool. Yeah, another. Honestly, I'm looking at Level Infinite, and it's sad, because, like, yeah, they're Tencent, but, like, ah, oh, I'm so excited for Warhammer Dark Side. I'm hey, so excited hey, hey, hey. for fucking yeah, yeah, all yeah. these games. Uh, I will never so, judge yeah. people. I ask, you know, if you are going to be judged, be prepared to be judged yourself. So, hey, you do... 
you do you, bro. But I'm just <laughs> saying people should be aware they're they're doing that to say they're not Tencent. That is why it's called Level Infinite. And again, not attacking Jeff Keighley for this, but you understand what's happening too, Jeff. You know, you know where the money's coming from. Maybe, maybe we should not accept their money. But again, I do not. I do not uh, judge. Yep that that is indeed Tencent's label. I I, I have it on here. Um, but yeah, yeah and that is it, not and that is not well known. I don't, I don't don't beat yourself up too much. I can tell you are. You're like how the fuck didn't I know that? <laughs> no one knows that. The only reason I it know that is some, yeah, some very astute people. I believe Colin Moriarty was the first one to say it, and I was like, no fucking way. And I looked it up, and I was like, dude, what? Like they're they literally made this so they can they cannot say they're Tencent. It's crazy. Yeah. Hey, okay, well. We'll see what becomes of that whole situation. But as far as the showcase itself, yeah, I thought it was pretty solid. Like a good 7 out of 10, something like that. Yeah, I actually agree, which I, I think it sounded like I was more negative than it was. This was, to me, a lot better than the last one. And I just I just not did, did not dig the last one. It was two hours. It felt way too long. I remember checking my, my phone, and we were like halfway through, and I was like, my God. Now, and, and also, um, the big thing there got leaked too, so that could have affected how much I liked the game. Would I have liked it more if that wasn't leaked? Who knows? I don't know. But all in all, this was much better. So good job, yeah. Jeff. Keep it up. Uh, and please, Game Awards, please make them more about the awards for the love of God. Yeah, fingers crossed. It seems that we got a glimpse of the payment setup for Xbox Game Pass through the game Cooking Simulator, or better put, through Big Cheese's studio's financial filing. This is spotted by Twisted Voxel and relayed via GamesIndustry.viz. Xbox made a one-off payment to publish the game on Game Pass for the amount of $600,000. This is pretty substantial given that this is equal to 20% of their net profit from the last fiscal year. So a uh, full quarter of their profit is due to being able to get on Game Pass. This is pretty crazy because this gives you kind of a glimpse of like what it is costing to put some games on there. Again, this is Cooking Simulator. This is Cooking Simulator. So if you're paying $600,000 to get that on the platform, just imagine. They're, they're shelling out millions of square to get those things. Millions. On. There's hundreds of games on Game Pass right now. Of course, some of them are Xbox owned, so you can argue that they don't cost as much. I'll put that in quotes because... It does cost them money to put it on there because you're losing sales, but mm -hmm. I just, just picture the figures from, from these studios. I always go back to Outriders, just kind of thinking, like, how much did that cost? Like, how much did it cost to snag Outriders at launch from Square? Now, at least two million. Now, yeah, easily. But now we do see Square had much, much, much less uh, outlook on their Western studios, so maybe it was not that much. Maybe they were like, just take this garbage or whatever i don't know because that was around the time marvel <laughs> avengers launched and they were still pissed or something fair maybe that's why stranger paradise still isn't on there for some reason <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is true yeah. um they got all the final fantasies i wonder how much that that costs because they remember they did oh. that special all final fantasies will eventually be on game pass kind of thing which they did with now yakuza and now persona which you know the modern personas whatever you want to call them three through five uh but that, i think that just we have i don't think we've ever seen how the money works aside from a couple snippets of like a studio will say like we haven't received royalties so that means we haven't made money on x game or whatever so we actually have a number figure with this one surprised that they were able to get away with saying that but who knows um we'll we'll have to see we'll, that gives us context my question is how long until the bubble pops because eventually xbox has to do something right eventually they'll either stop shelling out the amount of money, similar to what we're seeing about Netflix right now, where they're starting to kind of ring the reins in because they want to start making money, probably. So when does that happen with Game Pass? Is that in 10 years? Is that in 5 years? Is that in 20 years? Who knows? Uh, it's Microsoft, so they could probably do this until all of us are dead in the ground. But we'll have to see. Probably. When we stop buying PCs, they'll chill out <laughs> on spending money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, the internet was very mad this morning. I, uh, this, this just happened as we were getting recording. Not just happened, but this happened relative enough where I could not do a write-up. So, I'll be getting a lot from the PlayStation blog on this one. But, the PS5 will be raising prices in almost every single market that they sell their PS5 in. Except America. Let's talk about it. So, the new 
Suggested repo places. Effective immediately. Unless otherwise noted. Are as follows. Europe. For your disc will be 549 in euros. The digital edition will be 449. UK. 479 for the uh, disc. Uh, 389 for the digital. Japan. This is effective September 15th. So you have some time to actually grab this. Um, for the uh, disc. 60,478 yen. The digital, 49,478 yen. Uh, for China, it is disc, 4,299 yen. I don't know why I'm reading this. No one in China listens to this show. PS5 <laughs> digital edition, 3,499 yen. Australia, with your uh, very strange... Oh, there we go. Sorry. Uh, disc is 799... Jesus. $799 digital 649 mexico uh 14999 or 12499 for the digital and in canada $649 and for the digital $519 now depending on your region the increase was more but standardly the prices went up anywhere between 50 to 80 US dollars for each region this is <laughs> This is what they said um, was behind the increase in prices. Quote, the global economic environment is a challenge that many of you around the world are no doubt experiencing. We're seeing high global inflation rates as well as adverse currency trends impacting consumers and creating pressure on many industries based on these challenging economic conditions. Sony Interactive Entertainment has made the difficult decision to increase the recommended retail price of PlayStation 5 in select markets across Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, Latin America, and as well as Canada. There'll be no price increases in the United States. While this price increase is necess a uh, necessity given the current global economic environment and its impact on SIE's business, our top priority continues to be improving the PS5 supply situation so that as many players as possible can experience everything that PS5 offers and what's still to come. Emmett uh. Watkins Jr. This is very interesting. We saw this happen actually earlier in the year with... Facebook or Meta, whatever garbage thing you want to call that garbage company, that yeah. that they were increasing their Meta Quests uh, by I believe fifty dollars or was it a hundred dollars? Oh, it's a hundred. It, it was a hundred. It was a hundred bucks. Thank you. And uh, that was a note that was like, yeah, this is pretty uncommon because they're not changing anything about the system. It is the same thing. They're now charging just a hundred dollars more, which is pretty crazy. And now. We are seeing Sony do the exact same situation for everyone except the Americas. Or, sorry, for, the, uh, for America. And um, I read this and was, I mean, frankly flabbergasted. I cannot think of a, a reason why you feel like you should have to increase your prices. I feel like you should be eating the cost. Whatever it is, you, uh, you make enough money. You can eat the cost. You make it up in the back end selling your video games. It sucks right now, but it's going to get better in probably the next year or two. I will say... Since the start of COVID, we have said that. So I understand that the uh, people at the top end of Sony are probably like, we've waited long enough. We can't keep eating these costs. Um, we know that chips are getting more expensive. We know that shipping has become more expensive. They've probably been eating uh, well over $100, maybe even uh, at the high point, $100 of costs in these systems. But in my argument should be, I feel like you have to. I feel like you have, you have to keep eating the costs. You have to keep getting your 30%. Compensation from every single sale on the digital store, and I believe every sale on the physical disc as well. So, I think this is this should be DefCon one. Like this should be like everything is bad, and I want to, and I highly doubt we're at that at the headquarters of of Sony right now. But what was your insight on this? This is very interesting, and I will say I was very happy to see everyone mad. About time, yeah. about time we got pissed off at a big corporation. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people. A lot of people have been a little slack on what people do and things, and everyone's very quick to defend people. Very happy to see a lot of people are upset about this, as they should be. This this is, to me, a bit egregious. Well, I agree. This is... Egregious might be more extreme than I feel right now, but this is definitely bad. Um, I would say, comparing this to the whole Oculus stuff, because I refuse to call it MetaQuest or whatever... <laughs> Comparing this to the whole Oculus stuff, I feel like the Oculus stuff was kind of 
you knew that price was going to get jacked up because when it came out at three hundred dollars, it was nuts. that was insanely cheap. Yeah, like that was already way cheaper than it than anyone expected it to be. Agreed. So yeah, that price hike that price hike was expected. Five hundred dollars for a PS Five is about what folks expected. Is right in line with what we thought. Um, and for some people, you could even say, "Hey, that's higher than we thought." The fact that, or in the case of five hundred, might be slightly higher. But like in the case of four hundred with the digital, digital version, that is cheaper than a lot of people probably expected. That's the cost of a PS4 Pro. So yeah, that the pricing isn't too much. Like the original pricing, I don't think was too low, and they needed to hike it up inevitably. I do think this is just a case, like you said, with the sh- chip shortage and all that stuff. It is costing them more. I guarantee you, the only reason they felt bold enough to say let's hike up the prices and get away with it, because you got a God of War coming. I guarantee you they are still going to sell a bunch of consoles. Maybe not, excuse me, maybe not quite as much as they were expecting originally. Now the price is higher. They're going to sell a bunch of consoles because of that God of War. And the only reason they didn't hike up the price in America is because it's probably the only territory where Xbox is nipping at their heels. Like Xbox is getting really close to matching them. And at this point, if you're in any of these territories, I tell you to buy an Xbox Series X before a PS5. God of War be damned. Like, Okay, sure, you can't play the new Kratos game. You can play 100, 200, 300 other games on Game Pass, and all of them are like top-tier games if you've never touched them before. You can play Gears of War 5. You can play the entire Yakuza series. You can play all this shit. So, like, when it comes to who's going to win the holiday season after this price hike, I feel like, you know, PlayStation's still going to be more or less the the winner in America because they are still trying to be competitive price wise. But in any of these other territories, I wouldn't be surprised if Xbox took the lead. Like, yeah, they might not have anything big coming out this year uh, towards the end of the year, but they got Starfield on the horizon. They got Redfall, which is a somewhat big release as well. They got a lot of stuff that people are looking forward to imminently on that platform to where I wouldn't be surprised if they took over in these territories. My mind is racing right now Uh, to bring up Multiple examples on, like, we could take this so many ways. Why didn't they, let's start with why didn't they increase in America? I feel like that's why, I think that's what most people would probably be like, oh, that's interesting. Why, why wouldn't they increase in America, right? I feel like the, the reason they would, I feel like it, it, it's many reasons. I don't think there's one thing we can point to be like, that is the reason right there. I do agree with your point, though. I feel like uh, <laughs> Xbox is pretty high on that list. <laughs> I think that is one of the, the major things. And also, America is the major battleground i guess is the way i don't know is is kind of the way i want to put it it's, that's a little dramatic but of course i love dramatic come on i'm a I mean, very Sony dramatic does person think of but this is like this is the biggest front this yes. is their main front of this war quote unquote in the console war yeah so you know i don't surprise i'm no surprise they want to remain competitive it's just like america's sales alone do not outweigh the sales of every other territory combined <laughs> that's what i'm thinking in my head mm. that's why it's i would argue maybe they do i don't know that's a good question because you have to uh, you if you bring in europe uk japan combined all those three does that match up that's a good question i should have uh, i should have made a write-up about that that actually would be an intriguing thing to think about i wish this i wish didn't this, this happened this morning or i would have had a fun a fun write-up to do um but i do think america probably is your number one market to to hit especially with the money it is interesting that they did not increase the price and this is the one place it is right so there has to be a reason are they offsetting the prices of what's shipping the majority of their units? Because I don't care where you are, the majority of the units are going to to America, right? So is is are they trying to cut the cost of what they have to do to get it to America by upping the prices in all the other regions, combined with all the other things we talked about? Uh, also, incentivize not to lose ground to Xbox in this territory uh, because they dominate everywhere else, right? Japan was. Uh, seeing a small surge in Series S's the last few quarters. Um, Xbox One, I think Series X went out for two quarters. You could also argue that's because of units available. PlayStation 5 has not been able to make units the last few uh, mm-hmm. quarters. That's why they have sold softly. They're just unable to make them. Um, and they com- they're probably having issues shipping them out as well. Um, but I believe there's multiple reasons, but I think the two biggest are what you brought up, right? You bring up the, they can't lose ground here. Uh, again, th- this is kind of where you're going to sell the majority of your units. You you have to make sure 
this place is seated with that 50 bucks. And also, we are very vocal, not not talking about UK, Europe. You're very vocal as well. I've actually seen a lot of people pissed off in Japan, actually, um, uh, via Twitter. People are kind of retweeting, like, uh, the replies of uh, of a Japanese account saying, like, oh, I'm not buying this anymore. You know, a lot of people are very upset. We'll have to see if that actually nets out, if that really will uh, change the landscape in those regions so far. But I really... I think this is unwise. I think this is very unwise. I would love to know the number. What What is the number that they're trying to hit here? Because this is a pretty steep price. And also, a couple of interesting ones I'll bring up really quick. Mexico. I mean, Australia. Australia is always incredibly expensive to already buy a console there. And you're raising it again. There's tariffs and all these things that inflate the cost. And you're... And you're like how many are you really selling that many units to make it make up for the difference in cost there like i don't know i i feel like this is from every aspect from optically from your base uh your fan base i feel like this looks bad and i think financially it seems desperate where you shouldn't need to feel desperate at your playstation my god you've won you basically won the last two generations almost in a row uh if you bring up sales as kind of the number one definition of what means to win a uh a generation you're way far ahead in this one maybe not as much um as we may think but i don't know i woke up to this and i i didn't have words i, I am shocked that they were like yeah we're gonna raise the price in every other market except america and they're even raising their market in japan which is where they're hard which is yeah. is crazy like i just don't i don't get it i i almost feel like i'm missing a puzzle piece i don't know I did see one good tweet someone made where they're like, um, over at Gamescom, they're still calling the PS5 and the Series X uh, next generation consoles. And I guess it makes sense since we just got final pricing on the X on the PS5. <laughs> like, That's right. a pretty good tweet. That's a pretty good tweet. Yeah, I, I that is very funny. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of lost for words. This is Xbox's, this is time. Now this is Xbox's turn to, to start. They're serving it up. Is this the return of PS3 Sony? Where where we'll, we put it at this because we know you'll buy it, right? That like I mean, is there this a return? I that might be. I think I think that's a little hyperbolic to say, but this definitely doesn't help the case. We've sprints of PS3 Sony have been sprinkled here throughout the PS5 cycle yep. already. Like the whole like oh we we're about premium. We're about all this ultra design. We're trying to make this thing look like the most expensive thing ever. Like that language has already been established. I feel like this is just another slight example of that. Um, but I don't think it's like you said. I don't think this might be DefCon Five as far as like you're raising the price. That's crazy. But as far as like the public perception of PlayStation, it's not DefCon Five yet because at the end of the day, agreed. PS3 was arrogant and had nothing to show for it. They didn't have God of War 3 until later. They didn't have Uncharted 2 because no one cared about 1 until later. Like, all that stuff came down the line. You have arrogant Sony right now with God of War coming imminently, with Spider-Man 2 next up, with all these really amazing games that people want to play. So, once that dries up and they're still arrogant, or if Xbox comes through and says, hey, Starfield, you can only get it here, and it's cheap. <laughs> so, like, you know, what once all that starts coming through on a consistent basis for Xbox, then you might have some trouble there. But right now, they're gonna survive this. I I will yes, I, I want to make that clear. I am not saying this is uh some sort of loss or, or anything like that. I, I think they will be perfectly fine, especially since you bring up God of War coming very soon. They're they're gonna be great. They're gonna be fine. I will say it's very surprising. I wonder if I wonder if um I wonder if the conversation of raising game prices again ever entered the fold, right? Because I feel like a lot of people would have rathered games be eighty dollars than no. all of their systems be fifty bucks more in their region. No, I, I definitely know, think that because if you think about this, right, sixty dollars mm -hmm. has been the default price for a very long time. Now we have seventy dollars, and now inflation has now eaten the ten dollars that they make off of their game. So now it's a net. It's a net neutral. You are now basically selling a $60 game 10 years ago. So you have now raised the price and not cut anything out of it. So I feel like it's almost an argument to maybe incentivize publishers to be like, hey, make it 80 bucks now. Or maybe you start charging first party games $80. I think they could get away with it. I, I think you could get away with it. But at the same time, I'm like, 
You're buying a console once. How many games are they going to make on this thing that you want to play? That's the question where it, it sucks to swallow that extra price now. But once you did it, you're done. But every God of War, every Spider-Man, the fucking Wolverine game, Final Fantasy probably, since that's heavy so- Sony affiliation. Right. Game, pretty much every Sony exclusive gets priced at $70 nowadays. Um, and even some of these third party games, I know the new Dead Island too, that's $70. Like it's getting a little ridiculous once you start adding in, oh, all these games are doing it. Now, of course, you got Game Pass out here offsetting that balance a little bit. So you're not paying so much, but I think people might have a harder pill to swallow if all the games they care about get priced up rather than the console that half of us already have. Also, Deadline 2 being at $70. I don't know about that one, but uh, we'll have to see. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I just I was thinking out loud, almost thinking, yeah, facing in some points very drastically. I mean, the euro is, right now is almost the same as um, uh, the U.S. dollar right now. So this is like fifty bucks right now, being the PS5 being more expensive, another fifty dollars on top of what we pay for. So that is very close to. Um, our currency system. So really out there, think about it. Like, would this change your mind on a system if you lived in one of these regions? And if you do live in the one of these regions, I'm curious what this did to you. Are you upset that you didn't get one sooner? Or do you find yourself now being gravitating towards maybe a Series X or a Switch now? Um, I will say, I can't recommend in some of these regions over a PS5 now. That That's like if 50 bucks is, is a huge deal. Which again, there's tax and fats and in and, and, and these regions as well. I don't know if I can recommend a PS5. Uh if if the money's tight, you just go with the Series S or X at that point. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. God of War's really good though. <laughs> so, like I'm, I might still. Um It probably will be pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. So I don't know. But yeah, um I'm s i am feel bad for all the uh international listeners out there. Uh Canada, all these places. Oh, that sucks. And some of these places, that's a lot. That's 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 not a small amount of money that it raised. So I feel bad. Hopefully, I don't know. Maybe they'll reverse it. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. But it looks bad. It's a great conversation. I love having you on the show. I mean, thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. Happy to be here. Sp- Whenever I jump in. Spider-Man <laughs> <laughs> Remastered launched recently on PC, and we have some data. Well, some UK data, but it shows some big success for the 2018 game. But as much as I thought, actually, the game's opening week showed that it is currently sitting at 26% um, uh, over the previous game that released on PC, God of War. This marks the fourth biggest PC launch of the year at, in the UK. Important distinction. According to Game Industry Biz, it sits right behind Elden Ring as number one, Total War, Warhammer 3 as number two, and Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga at number three. As also pointed out by Games Industry Up is, this puts PlayStation in an entering spot in terms of sales. As a reminder, PlayStation projected a huge PC revenue starting from November 22nd that would bring in $300 million. Right now, they're sitting at $108.9 million in revenue, which combines Horizon Zero Dawn, Days Gone, and God of War on PC. So, where's all that money going to be coming from? Uh, I imagine Spider-Man being 26% higher... You could argue that that's that's probably going to be a cool maybe 60 million or something on top of that. But that's a pretty big deficit. Very curious what that is still left on the table. Maybe factions. I don't know. That's a pretty big chunk. Maybe it's going to be two or three other games from PlayStation. I mean, Miles is still coming. Miles Morales is still coming. That's a good question. Yep, yeah, That's a, not a um, question. Sorry. A good point. Yeah. If there's any other PlayStation game coming this year, I don't know what it would be. I do think Factions is a pretty good guess for another game coming to PC. I don't think that's coming within the within the physical year. I, I, I've doubted myself multiple times, like since this is definitely going to be their first games as a service title. Is it going to be day and date on PC? I will say no, but that would be a very interesting move in a very different Sony that we are already seeing slightly changed with this PC iteration. And uh, another shocking thing about the uh, thing prior, they've uh, opened the avenue to sell games on PC, but they're still raising the prices of their PS5, so they're just getting additional revenue. And <laughs> anyways, it's not important. But yeah, I, I I think PlayStation's. I don't know. They they seem to getting more and more friendly with the PC market. There's rumors of that PC launcher coming. Uh, I don't know. I I think I think they're here to stay definitely for PC. I'm just curious where is that other chunk of money coming from. 
And I think I you mean, I think I you're think, probably right with Miles Morales. Probably. Yeah. You you get a summer sale that has God of War at 20% off. There's a couple million right there. Uh, Horizon's already been selling for a while. Oh, uh, Last of Us uh, Remastered. Last of Us Remastered. Yeah, that's supposed to be coming to PC soon as well. So that's probably where it comes from as well. Yeah. Actually, that might just be it. <laughs> that, um, I'll be shocked if that is, though, because I, I imagine Spider-Man was going to sell way more than that. I was actually kind of surprised. I thought that was gonna. I thought that was gonna rake in fucking money. Of course, this is only UK data, and this is only from the last week. But I was still a little surprised. Twenty six percent more than God of War. I could. I thought it was. Way more I'll than say that. this. I feel like the UK PlayStation has such a stronghold in the UK anyway, and I'm sure a lot of people play Spider Man on the actual PlayStation consoles already. So I'm not too surprised by that. I think sales are way, way, way bigger in America when it comes to Spider-Man Remastered on PC or really PC games in general. Right. Um, also, I will say it's very funny how the biggest PC games this year are just aggressively PC games. Aggressive. Wars. Yeah. It's like Elden Ring. That's a fucking PC game. Total, Total War Warhammer 3. I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, you're not going to beat these two. <laughs> exactly. Like those are PC as fuck. But um, but yeah, uh, it, I think you're going to get more revenue with Last of Us Part 1 with Miles Morales eventually coming. I think you're going to see them cross that 300 billion or 300 million mark very easily come the end of the year. I will say I did sound pretty negative on that. It is still impressive that they are top four on PC launches. That is still pretty impressive because oh, that is a uh, four year old game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, geez, you know, that's still impressive. I don't want to uh, get on them too much. I just thought Spider-Man. You're printing money at that point. I don't know. I will say a small side note. If they do bring factions to PC day and date, I only see it happening if it is like free to play or something. So because that actually is a very good thing to bring up. I actually kind of wanted to ask you this question before I move on. Pertaining to factions as a game, what is it going to be? Are they going to sell a $70 premium multiplayer experience? And try to ship it in that manner. And maybe there's small cosmetics added in. Or is it going to be a free to play title. Where you jump in. And it's the Fortnite treatment. You pay things. You can wear a duck hat. And it's $20 or whatever the hell. Or is it something in the middle. I, I, I've i been struggling to try and figure out what it was going to be. I originally said it was going to be 70 bucks. Then I thought well maybe it's going to be $20. Alongside last of us part one or something or, or I, but that that's not happening so like i i don't know what it, i don't know what it's gonna be it, maybe it's free to play and they're just gonna straight up try to fortnite this thing i feel like sony is super hesitant to take their biggest ip that they have right now and make any type of free to play version because yes people will play it but they want the money like that's what Sony always cares about. Like they, that's why they sell the seventy dollars games, and then they don't put them on PC for a couple of years so they can get another injection off that game. Um, it, when it comes to factions, I do think free to play makes the most sense, just because if you want everyone to play it, there you go. But I do think it's going to be like a forty dollars game, maybe not quite twenty because that's very low, but like forty, maybe even fifty. I can see that being the price of it. And if they are really trying to make this have the player base that they want it to, they will put it on PC with crossplay day one. Um, but it just depends on what what do they care about more? Do they care about we want the second injection of more paying customers a couple of years down the line with factions? Or do they want as many players as possible day one? Everyone let's go. Because they're missing out on the money if they just put it out all at the same time. They miss on that hype and that anticipation of I've been on PC for all these years, now I can finally play it. But you want as many players playing a multiplayer game as possible. That's the long tail and the long monetization tail as well. So um, it's up to them. But I, I imagine this thing's going to be discount priced. Uh, but I just don't know if it's going to be PC day and day. I think that's the one you do if you're trying to experiment with that. But it's their biggest IP, so I still don't know. Yeah, I agree with everything you basically said. I, I think if 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 there was going to be a game that launches day and day, it has to be one this or it has to be some sort of future title. We know they're making what ten uh, free like uh, games as a service titles in the next twenty years or something like that. Yeah. So like Firewalk Studios or something, one of those. Yeah. So so they're they're going to be aggressive in the space. Now, are these all going to be paid experiences? I just find that hard to believe because let's not forget Jim Ryan. He's a he's we have a businessman as a CEO. You know, uh, Sean Layden. He was a businessman as well, but he had some creative in him. 
and he, and I think he had a very interesting outlook on the industry. And I feel like um, and side note, I, I think we all know why a bunch of people left PlayStation a few years ago now, uh, because they they yeah. saw what was happening. Like we we don't want to do this, so they left. But uh, besides the point, um, I'm I'm a little off topic there, but the pl- PlayStation entering the games as a service model. It is such an interesting thing to think about because it can go one of two ways. They stick with premium, like you brought up earlier. Premium is us. We're premium. You're going to buy money. You're going to get a good experience. Or are they just going to, hey, hey, we want to try to be Fortnite. We want to try to be multiverses with 10 million players or whatever the hell. Like we want a huge player base and we are going to churn PlayStation characters into X thing. Hey, buy your Kratos skin for twenty five dollars, and you can wear them in Last of Us factions or something. Sure, you know, who knows? Who oh knows what's going to happen? So, two, one of two ways: they go free to play and they get some crazy shit in there, or it's a premium experience. Experience you pay for it. It's all based in like levels. There might be a small monetization aspect to it, but they'll stick with like a very premium stamp of like fifty, sixty dollars. Who knows? Yeah, time will tell. Certainly. PSVR 2 uh, strangely announced a release date. PlayStation France seemingly went a bit early, followed by some other uh, regions closely after with a simple message stating, quote, coming early 2023, hashtag PSVR 2, end quote. This was quite unceremonious, which kind of follows the track record of updates about PlayStation VR 2, mainly getting info from blog posts, tweets, etc. Um, this is really all, all the news that, that it was. I, I actually thought it was fake. When I first saw it, it was like early in the morning. I opened my phone and it was just a picture of PSVR 2. And then on top of it, it was like in French. Uh, this uh, is coming coming early 2023. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, OK, all right. Um, but when I yeah, I literally thought I was like, oh, this is fake. But then I like looked, I was like, oh, no, this is real. Why is and then like other. Re- so I'm assuming maybe it came a little early or something. I don't know. But uh this yeah. but the this is cool I, I don't really have much to add. we talked a lot about psvr2 on the show so i don't really have too too much else to add i'm excited uh this is cool yeah. early 2023 i think everyone kind of gets that at this point yeah i'm excited for it but it, it is weird that honestly in the inverse of the ps5 price hike every territory had a coming early 2023 psvr2 tweet except america so i'm not saying oh it's coming out this year in america but like weird that they didn't put one out for us, but we got the news anyway. Um, I I knew this thing was going to be delayed from the beginning. They kept saying it's 2022. I didn't believe for a second, but I look forward to trying it whenever it does come. Hopefully they're make. Hopefully they're pushing it back so they can start porting the PSVR games to it. Because God, I have so many PSVR games. Me too. Just been me too, brother. On. Me so too. We'll, I want to play Red Matter finally. <laughs> Have I asked you the question how much? Is, I don't think I have. Have I asked you how much this was going to cost? Oh, uh, shit. I want to say 500. I do too. That's what I've been saying is 500 bucks. Yeah, because you can't you can't make it more than the console. That's for damn sure. No, but it it can't be the same price as the last PSVR. So what I might say is 400 for it, but there's a bundle that's 500 with like extra games, like a game or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, the, like the VR uh, Iron Man bundle. I agree. There's no way it's less than 400 and they can't go over 500. So it's either four or five. So I've seen some crazy fucking, someone said it might be 300. I was like, you're crazy as fuck. Um, never. it will never no. be that. Now we know for sure. It won't cause they just raised all of the PS5 prizes. So they're, they're not eating costs. They're not eating a hundred dollars plus on a VR system. So I think, yeah, I, th- I think it's going to sit at, I think it will be 500, but it's going to come with probably two games to try and like make the punch hurt a little less. But I think they're going to announce the next uh, Asobi game, Team Asobi. Oh, definitely. Yeah, right. Uh, we actually covered last week with uh, Iso Christian that, um, that uh, great interview that uh, Team Asobi gave. Um, and they're like, yeah, you know, we we have a R and D team that experiments things with all time, and like, oh yeah, PSVR two for sure, Astrobot, you know, insert subtitle there, uh, yeah, and, and uh, just quickly circle back, and then we'll move on. Uh, please, this should be a given, but I swear, if you don't do it, I will probably not buy this thing. 
make it backwards compatible. I have so many VR yeah. titles. Uh, I can't imagine you not making it backwards compatible. But if you don't, I probably will not buy this thing just on principle. I, ca I can't justify it because mm -hmm. I have so many VR games that I have not touched, specifically waiting on this. So please yep. let me play right the other games. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, this is quite an interesting one. I didn't see too, too many people talking about. Sony is being sued for 5 billion euros for, quote, ripping off players, end quote. This suit is pertaining to the 30% cut that Sony receives from every product sold through the PlayStation Store. Consumer rights advocate Alex Neal, who leads the suit, says, quote, The action of Sony is costing millions of people who can't afford it, particularly when we're in the midst of a cost of living crisis, and the customer purse is being squeezed like never before, end quote. Note that this is far from uncommon, as Nintendo and Microsoft both charge the exact same commission. Now, there is a Consumer Rights Act that seems to be the backbone of this argument presented, but I know almost nothing about hard law in the U.S., and I know even less about law in the U.K. Hmm. This is about all that I could garner from this. There was a Consumer Act bill that was proposed in, I want to say, 2015, and all of all of their argument is the 5 billion euros comes from, from that point to now. I can't see this standing in court, but again, I don't know UK law, but this just, I mean, it really seems like nonsense. I can't imagine like, they, like it, it, and if they're proposing some sort of monopoly, I can maybe understand your point of view. Uh, but I don't, I, how do you even argue that they're ripping, they're whipping off players? I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand now. Yeah. I will say they have an interesting <laughs> timing when, when they just, uh, uh, made all of their systems more expensive, but even with that, they, they I don't even think you have grounds in a court of law with with this kind of stance. So I I, I think this is kind of nothing. Yeah, I I think if, even if this ends up winning, they're not getting five billion euros. No, no, no. Um, I will say though, I do. While I don't entirely know the particulars of this case specifically, I do think there is a thing in how PlayStation does have like an exclusivity with playstation systems in the same way where i find it a little annoying where if you're on an iphone you have to download stuff from the app store or nothing right but if you're on android you can download it off the store or you can go to like the samsung store or you can just download an apk off the internet yep like i appreciate that freedom and while it's not the same for playstation i wish it was more like steam where you don't have to go to steam to buy a game you can go to green man gaming or fanatical or all these other random websites that sell the same games and buy them there. I think that's good because it keeps prices competitive. Ugh, excuse me, prices competitive on Steam. It gives people incentive to make sales. But on PlayStation, if you're not buying it directly off the store, you're not getting. Yeah, you might get a code for it at GameStop or something like that. But nine times out of ten, it's the store or nothing. And I really would want Sony to say, "Hey, we have we're letting keys be sold on all these other sites." Uh, so that there can be more of a competitive market for these prices, because I hate that, you know, some of these games are still like Returnal, still 70 bucks, you know, stuff like um, even way older games. Like there are still PS3 games that are full price because you can't download them anywhere except through the PlayStation Store. So I wish that was being fought about more than whatever this is. This just seems like oh, they're getting a 30 percent cut like everyone else. But I'm not sure how that cut affects the actual consumers. Because it's not like they're, are they paying more because they're taking a 30% cut? It just seems very murky there. But there's there's something to be mad about, probably just not this. Yep, I, I can see the point of view of like the cut is too much maybe. But again, that's based on the platform. And it's the same on the other places. So this is far from a comment. So I, I just, I don't even see, I don't even see what basis you put this on. Again, if there was some sort of monopolistic environment happening, and definitely, yeah. I, I actually found the Epic Apple case kind of compelling because Apple has this huge huge base and the only way to interact through it is the App Store. And I found that way more compelling because you do kind of have a huge ecosystem that you developed and now you have developed a store inside of it. Now other people are putting their products on that store and they're not, there is now no other way for anything else to compete versus like... Uh, making side stores and things of that nature but those are phones and that was a way bigger case these, these are just video game consoles so i feel like that's these are two widely different things uh to argue about but yeah i, I like yeah I, I don't think i think this is a lot about nothing I, I would be shocked if this even makes it to court i wouldn't be shocked if this is just thrown out and they're like what the fuck is this 
judge look at this and like, what, what do I even, how do I even judge this? Five bill? Nah. <laughs> Five bill. That's a lot of money. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. This is a crazy one. So strap in everyone. Quite a stir has happened. But you know, this is a long write up. So ch chip out, grab a drink. We stand up, get some circulation going. Quite a stir has happened between three companies. According to VGC, two Indonesian-based studios have accused publisher P-Cube Games that the publisher has used the fact that these previously stated two studios were based in Indonesia to obtain a diversity from, quote, a well-known console platform, end quote, then chose not to pass the money to either studio. Both studios uh, say uh, QP, quote, intentionally without information about the grant and use it as leverage for their own commercial gain, end quote. In a joint statement on Twitter from the two studios, uh, their game, A Space for Unbound, has been delayed until further notice. They searched for a new publisher, quote, Earlier this year, we discovered that Pukey Games, a UK-based publisher that we signed on uh, for the console publishing of A Space Unbound, sorry, A Space for the Unbound, for Western regions, had done certain things which have left us feeling manipulated explo and exploited, and so we have to terminate our agreement with them. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in August 2022, PQ Games used our position and heritage as developers from Indonesia to obtain a diversity fund from, from a well-known console platform. A diversity fund has, uh, was a grant fund intended to help underrepresented game developers, especially during the pandemic. However, instead of giving those funds to the developers as the grant was intended, PQ Games intentionally withheld information about the grant and used this as leverage for their own commercial gain. Rather than paying the grant money to us, PQ hit the facts about the grant's award and added it as a recoupable minimum guarantee and then used it to negotiate the increase of their revenue share. We have only uncovered the true amount of these funds and their intended purposes in March of 2022. End quote. The statement goes on to give some details about the alleged withholdings, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's a full statement if you'd like to go to either uh, Twitter accounts. P-Cube has responded to these allegations in a statement given to VGC. It states, quote, We have honored all obligations of our publishing agreement and have supported uh, Togue Productions at every stage of product development throughout their delays and difficulties. This support has included offering significant further funding over and, uh, over and above grant funding to support development, porting, and marketing. Togue Productions have sought for some time to unilaterally enforce unreasonable revised terms to our agreement and is disappointed that, as a result of not uh, achieving that, and despite PQ's significant efforts to accommodate this, they have sought to deal with the matter in this way. We will respond through the appropriate channels. End quote. While the truth remains unknown, we will try to get everyone updated as the story develops. Woo! Very, very this serious is, allegations. Mm-hmm. Huh. I can't believe this. Here's the thing. We've been hearing a lot about slimy behavior in the video game industry over the last couple of years. So it shouldn't be too surprising that something like this could happen. Um, it's just, it, it just feels very like, because it's one thing, how do I say this without not sounding insensitive? It's one thing for like direct abuse between people, like individuals, that's something you can get your head around more or less. Because that's, you know, a, a, a person did a bad thing, and we understand that, and that's easy to say bad. That's easy to, you know, bemoan. This thing is like, you're messing with the whole company. Like, you're just manipulating a company. You're trying to get, like, you're trying to get a credit that doesn't even apply to you, but you're saying they're under you, so you can get the credit, and then you were holding it. This is like, when we talk about, like, there are bad people and then there are bad, like, institutions, like, this is the type of, like, systemic issue and an example of a systemic issue that is just, that drives me up a fucking wall, to be honest with you. Um, I wasn't familiar with either this developer or this publisher before this, but I, I saw a glimpse of this story. Yeah, I saw a glimpse of this story last uh, last night, and I was just like, I couldn't believe this shit, especially during COVID and all this stuff where... I'm sure that that was kind of like you were lucky to get a publisher with all the chaos of that shit going on. Like, it just feels really awful. Uh, and I hate to see it. We, we keep talking about these games. We want to see more diverse voices in all art, but video games in this context. And to see that they're getting taken advantage of in this way, I just hate to see it. Uh, hopefully, P-Cube is 
I don't even want to say like punish. Yes, I hope the karma that they are propagating comes back around to them. But at the same time, I, just don't do this shit. Like it's good that they're getting called out for it, and you know I hope that you know justice comes to light. But god damn, man, <laughs> what the hell? So it just seems so wild to do. So stick with me, achievers. One, I believe in innocent until proven guilty. Caveat. This is an important in, uh, indication here. These two studios found out that there was a grant given to the publisher. If that is untrue, that should be incredibly easy for the publisher to prove that they did not receive money. So they went to the... Uh, so now the devs, both devs probably went to the publisher, said, what happened? And they probably did not have sufficient answers and went to the trouble of leaving the publisher. That is not a small thing to do. They are, both studios are now going to leave this publisher. They, ha I would argue, they probably have some hardcore evidence to the contrary uh, to them actually taking these funds. So I am inclined to believe uh, that this, for the, there was probably some sort of um, uh, uh, unsavory oh, things but... happening here. Yeah. Um, because I don't think uh, just off of rumors you go, oh, well, we're just going to leave the publisher, it, it, you know, near the end of their production. They said they, they're they almost done, apparently. Uh, they're, they they were expected to launch earlier this year. And now they're like, we, we have to delay it until we can get set up somewhere else. Uh, so, again, I, I believe innocent to prove guilty, but this seems... Um, this seems almost uh, cut and chase because there's no way they went to all this trouble and then just made up a fact that they took some fund or something. Uh, P Cube, if you were wise, would have already done something to prove if this actually did not happen. You would have, I feel like, already tried to approve them that. I don't know. Um, but hopefully, I agree with you one thing. Hopefully, justice is served in this situation because P Cube, I, I, again, I, how do you not have proof that this didn't happen if that is not true? So yeah, I it, don't understand. It feels like I, I'll just say real quick, this feels like a case of, oh, it happened. We just have to prove we were wrong about it. <laughs> like we have to prove that we were in the right doing what we did, not if this happened or not. They probably got some lawyers yeah. looking over the like agreement, like, all right, how do we say mm -hmm. something without saying something? You know, so. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hopefully, again, hopefully just to serve. Rightly. Yeah. Don't take advantage of these studios, man. Everybody's trying to make art the same way. Like, let's let's not do that. Let's not if you're if you're working with the little guy, be on their fucking side. Don't eat them up. Yeah, I think it's even worse that they went it's it's even worse they went back to the studio and was like, Oh, well, you know, we can have more money, but you will need more of the revenue share. It's like, whoa. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. That's like, that's like that malicious to that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something meant for them. You're holding it over their head. That's just fucking wild. So instead of doing a write-up on this next story, I was actually going to read straight up from VGC because they wrote it out very uh, sequently, and I feel like I could not put it in better words. So I'm going to just read off. This is uh, by Jordan Midler. Great, great writer. I love him. And I love VGC. It's one of my favorite, uh, quickly becoming one of my favorite video game sites. Titled GTA right. Developer Claims Rockstar has issued a copyright strike against his prototype footage. I find this very interesting, so I'll go over this quickly. I don't think I'll have too much to, to say on this, but it, it, it's, it's, uh, it could mean more. We'll figure it out. In a tweet, the developer, who was one of the founders of DMA Design, now Rockstar North, said, quote, I see Rockstar are going full fuckers mode again, issuing copyright strikes to any GTA video they can find, including both my prototype videos, end quote. Uh... Oh, sorry, quote, so now they're trying to block all release of anyone's work on a game and, and any old development footage, end quote. The Total Ride video in question showed off an original build of GTA, which was created in the mid-90s, when the Dundee-based DMA designs were still most uh, well-known for the Lemmings franchise. Development documentation surrounding the creation of GTA is rare, but several of the original developers who worked on the DMA series during their early days have posted some behind-the-scenes development videos in recent years. Daily's allegations suggest that Rockstar is currently targeting those videos, though Daily's tweet is the first notable public mention of this. Mm. So, I will bring up one thing very quickly, and I don't really have too much else to say about it, but one, this could, could be automated. So Rockstar didn't necessarily do this intentionally. They could have. Who knows? Second, hopefully this is reversed. This is history. We have, uh, I feel like we don't regard video game history nearly enough 
um, in our kind of egos. And I think that just kind of pertains because we're so young. I mean, at, at the end of the day, we're only really kind of 40 years old as an industry. Yeah. So I think we should sure. definitely value history much, 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 much more than what we do right now. And this is one example. Like, we, we should have this in a trove somewhere, sealed, and, like, talked about. This is, like, this is arguably one of the most important games ever. Top 10, easily. So we should, we should uh, be more open with that. And this is the downside with things like copyright claims and strikes and all of these natures. Regardless of this had intent or not, this is a example of history being lost, regardless of intent, regardless of any outside factors. So I wanted to bring this up. It is a very interesting story, and I hope Rockstar um, stops. I don't know why they, again, I don't know why they really would have bothered with this. That's my thing. Yeah. Free them until it's backwards. I tried. You, Anywho, you, you, I'm I'm still I'm still salty about uh, Red Dead remakes or remakes aren't happening. So, oh my but, god, we could have had Red Dead two, like on the current Nick, systems, yeah. like beautiful, sixty frames. Yes. Oh my fucking god! And they're like, oh, the Grand Theft Auto trilogies didn't work, so I guess we won't make what? them. I'm like, how do you? That? How do you? You had an AI <laughs> worked throughout the whole Not game. A mobile what? developer to make it. Like, Thank you. Now. What did you, what did you expect? I, there's like barely a hundred people over there. Yeah, we uh, to play, and it sold well, better than you expected. It so sold get the fuck out like a lot, especially pertaining to a broken. I remember a picture, or sorry, a video of um, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, him biking on the beach, the water uh, uh, overlaid behind the ocean. So water was falling and being eaten by the ocean, and you could tell that the the, uh, the scening in the uh, in the uh, foreground was in front of the rain. So you could see an ocean and no rain falling behind it. It's hard to picture that in your head, achievers. If you find the video, you will understand why it looks so Wait, wrong. Yeah, it looks wild. Yeah, he, he, they forgot to uh, bring forward. <laughs> they they forgot to bring forward on that one. Good God. This might might be well VGC the show because we're going back to them yet again. Yakuza creator Tashihiro and Nago- Nagoshi has been given an interview to a German publication for players, but I'm grabbing all of my info from VGC here, detailing his upcoming new release under his new studio, M- Nagoshi Studios, under NetEase. Don't get too excited. There's not too many details that were revealed, but we have some quotes on theming and inspiration. Quote, of course, I can't reveal too much about our game yet, but I can give a rough idea. It will definitely contain violence as a game element, but I don't want to go too much into the direction of thriller or even horror. I want my game to be more like a Quentin Tarantino film, so there can be humor. Something that that's just intimidating or just bloody and brutal doesn't suit my tastes. I want a human touch, a bit of silliness, and a bit of seriousness. But that's what I'm in the mood for at the moment. End quote. After announcing the studio in January and revealing that his studio is, quote, a wholly owned, sub- owned subsidiary, end quote, of a Chinese company, NetEase Games, he will be focusing on, quote, high-end titles for war release, primarily on consoles, end quote. Very cool. I- I'm not a huge Yakuza fans. I just wanted to bring this attention to the achievers out there. That uh, This is kind of cool. That Just the way he describes it as similar like a Quentin Tarantino kind of movie. I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Again, I'm not super into these types of games, but... Uh, well, anything attached to his name, I'm sure, will get uh, waves in the um, games industry whenever he announces what he's doing. Certainly, I'm right there with you. I, I, I haven't played much of the Yakuza games, with the exception of the demo for the first one, a lot back on PS2. Um, but I know he can make some good stuff. And you mentioned Quentin Tarantino. I'm gonna be in the door. So, yep. look forward to whatever he's working. Yep, on. yep. And I finally understand what that means. Yeah. Oh my God. You got so much more to watch too. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, I do. And, and, and rest of our dogs might be next. I don't know. We'll talk about it uh, at the end of the show. After nearly a decade, Tiger Woods will be back on a cover of a golf game, but this time it's PGA Tour 2K23. Undoubtedly, you'll remember Tiger Woods' names in gaming as it was attached to the EA series Tiger Woods PGA Tour. After releasing more than 16 Tiger Woods games, EA split with the athlete in 2013. Unknown fully, the reasons uh, for the drop could be attached to financial, etc., etc. But Roy McElroy replaced him on the cover athlete 
And that uh, name is still ongoing. PGA Tour 2K23 is set to release worldwide Friday, October 14th, 2022. That is the last story for the week. I thought that was quite interesting and very deliberate, I'm sure, by 2K's point, where they're like, oh, yeah, let's put Tiger Woods in front of this to try and uh, uh, sway people to come in for this one. Yeah, that nostalgia. Let's get it. I will say, Achievers, if there's any golf fans, uh, let me know what is the premier golf game now. Um, I knew it used to be the Tiger Woods franchise. That was, uh, I remember Tiger Woods 14 being like one of the biggest golf games ever. So let me know if like which one of these two is like the biggest right now. I, I haven't, I've been out of the scene for so long, I don't even know uh, which you one's kind of seen. Fans, you know how many golf fans listen to this show? Uh, 10. Four. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like I, that just to me. everyone's like no it's two right it has to be. <laughs> it's two they're and like, they're making a sandwich so they can't they're, they didn't hear the part where i said leave a comment <laughs> um, go, yeah. but yeah I, uh yeah <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> but anyways i'm very curious if anyone out there does know i have no idea that's the news for the week now we're moving on to date updates. There's a good bit. Game Awards 2022 has a date of Thursday, December 8th. Get excited, I guess. I will Yay, be. Yay, birthday week. Sometime close, I think. It's the 11th, so wherever that is, it's nearby. Uh, Sunday, right? Uh, I am actually looking it up right now. Yes, in the Sunday. Uh, yeah, my birthday Sunday, so that's the Thursday beforehand? Hell yeah, I'll probably be off. <laughs> my wife Sunday, is so. four days prior to this. Fun fact. Ooh! Wow. Yep. Just, we're too close. In we are. We are. And actually, my co, my my uh, former co-host Alex is is uh, three days before this. So they. Jesus <laughs> fuck. God. Yeah. And my best friend Andy is like the day before mine. So it's Jesus. like, oh boy. Jesus. Oh my god. We almost have a week between us two of people. <laughs> Why did all of our parents have to bang in the summertime? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. That mean, I guess I, it makes sense. No, they banged around February. Uh, so right on Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Yeah. The, the the it was in the air. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> the following <laughs> games are coming to PC Game Pass as kind of a celebration of um QuakeCon. Return to Castle, Wolfenstein, Quake 4, Wolf in Sign 3D, Elder Scrolls Legend, Battle Spear, uh, The Elder Scrolls Adventures, Red Guard, and these two uh, games are free on the Microsoft Store currently. The Elder Scrolls Arena and Daggerfall and Quake Champions. I believe with yeah, Quake Champions I'm was already free. I think you get all the champions in the game. Sure. Well, probably. they have a Game Pass perk for getting all the champions in Quake Champions. That's what, you know what? I, I mixed two things up. Thank you. Yeah. So the game is free and, and there's a Game Pass perk. Sorry. Yeah, you can pay as BJ Blazkowicz and a Doom Marine in Quake Champions, and I will be trying that out later. That's pretty sick. Mm -hmm. Prime Gaming free titles lineup for September. Assassin's Creed Origins, Football Manager 2022, Shadow of Mordor, God of, uh, God of War, Jesus, Game of the Year Edition, Jesus. The Dig, <laughs> Defend the Rook, We the Revolution, Castle on the Coast, Word of the Law, Death Mask Collector's Edition. <laughs> Gotta be real with you. Don't know what most of these games are, but Assassin's Creed Origins, best Assassin's Creed game. Everyone go play. Oh, no. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the best Assassin's Creed game, and I appreciate your opinion. Uh, <laughs> Don't no, go to Africa, though, so it's inferior in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh my, my point. Of view. Good point. Good point. Good point. No, it's a great game. Everyone, please try, try out Origins. It's, it's fantastic. It has the MNC of the approval, so you know it's good. Or it's terrible. So, you know, roll the dice. <laughs> Shadow of Mordor. Fair, fair. Shadow of Mordor is very fun, too. Check that out. Um, Pentiment launches November 15th for PC and Xbox. The Sega Mega Drive Mini 2 and the Genesis Mini 2 will launch in corresponding um, regions October 27th. So, of course, whatever one your region has, you'll be getting. That is the news for the week. We're done with date updates, and now we're ending the show just like we started with a singular question to my co-host, and that, of course, is so. Oh, what do you have keto for the week, Emmett? This, of course, can be a game, a comic book, a book, a podcast, some sort of manga that you have sitting around. Anything, really, a movie. Please tell me <laughs> what do you have keto for the week? Manga. Ro, so um, I, I gave this, I gave this, it, I gave this a few weeks ago, and Ro was like, "Oh, I can say anything." So I'm reading a manga. I'm like, "I gotta add manga to the fucking thing now." <laughs> well, I'll I'll say this because I'm gonna throw a complete curveball. I the thing that I'm most looking forward to is none of those things. Uh, I am going hiking on Sunday. Oh, um, 
yeah, we're going up to uh, North Georgia, Tallulah Falls. Uh, they have a gorge there that we can walk to. Um, I've been there a couple times, so this is my first time back in like two or three years, so I'm excited to go back. Um, the only thing that sucks, though, I work nights. And while I am off on the day that we're hiking, I will be working until like at least 2 a.m., and we have to get there at 8 o'clock to get the permit to go to the gorge, which means we need to leave at about 6.30. <laughs> so... You're riding the lightning there, buddy. I am riding the lightning, but thank God we're carpooling because I will sleep in the car on the way there. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you'll get some Z's. Yeah. Thank God for good friends. But um, other than that, it's like the main event. Um, Saints Row is here. It got delivered right before I woke up today. So perhaps I'll get to try that out tomorrow. Uh, Midnight Fight Express, I'm going to keep playing. I've been really itching to like watch some stuff and not just another video essay, which by the way, uh one of my favorite video essays fd signifier put out an entire two and a half hour video on the black mana sphere that i stayed up watching last night um i don't care about the mana sphere stuff or knew about any of that stuff but his video about it was really good and like really like eye-opening in a lot of ways so he makes good stuff so shout out to that but i want to watch like a movie or a tv show so within the next week, I think I'm going to finally go back to either Atlanta or uh, Abbott Elementary and finish off that season mm. uh, because it was really good. Or I might finally say fuck it and watch, uh, what is it, the Indiana Jones movie that's bad, the one with the aliens, I forget what it's called. Uh, Chris Kingdom Skull. of the Kiss Girl Skull, yeah. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah. I think I'm going to watch that. So one of those I'll get around to. Those are my plans for the next week. My plans, probably Destiny 2. Um... I'll be doing King's Fall Friday, which means as soon as that launches uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern, you have 24 hours to complete the raid twice, one under regular and one doing challenges. So that will be my Friday and most likely some of the weekend going through and finishing that. And then uh, probably Dabble Saints Row. Dip my toe, see if I like it, see if I'll stick with it. I have no idea if I will. Um, but I will definitely give it a try because there's nothing else to play, so I might as well play a new game that came out and see if I can give my opinion on something. Except Midnight Fight Express. Good point. That's actually a good I reminder. Um, and, and I actually yeah. I need to download that now because I want to play that. So never mind. There you go. I will be downloading that. I'll probably will, play that over Saints Row. Yeah, honestly, I don't blame you at this point. <clears throat> I will also throw in the pot there. I forgot to mention this. JID's new album comes out tomorrow, The Forever Story. And I've been excited for this young man's album for literally like two years at this point. So that's coming out. I will be listening to that a lot, probably on the hike with all my friends. So oh, yeah. Very excited for that. So I just wanted to point that out. Go listen to Blaring that Blaring a new album while hiking. That sounds pretty sick. Oh, yeah. I'm bringing, I got the Bluetooth speaker and everything. I'm fucking going ham. It's going to be a good time. Oh, and then um, the movie for the week. Mm. Let me go back to the list. Um, let's see. As I was, as always, remember I made a list. It was called "I was made fun of Emmett," so now I have to watch all of these movies list. Uh, and right now we have only watched Inglorious Bastards. I will be putting. Hold on, let me put a W next to that. Boom, watched. Okay, now. Next up, maybe The Departed. Let's do. Let's say this. We'll, it will be between The Departed, hmm. Departed, Burn After Reading, or Black Klansman. It'll be between those three. I'll tell you what we watch next week. Any recommendations out of those three? I would say it depends on the mood. The Departed is a very fun, entertaining, sometimes funny ride. It ends in a way you will not expect. Okay. And it does not match the tone of the rest of the movie, I would say. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to say how, but just that's what that is. Black Klansman is a fun and entertaining ride also, but it's also very intense as well. It does have a little bit of comedy here and there, but it is much more of a just straight drama. And considering the subject matter, that could hit or not for you. But, you know, Spike Lee's a goat for a reason, and he's good in this movie as well. Uh, what was the other one you said? Um, uh, you Burn After Reading, Fargo. I'm feeling... Burn, Burn After Reading. Which one are you feeling more out of those two? Fargo. Okay. In that case, Fargo is just weird. And I love it mm. because it's literally just like these downtown or these down-home folksy small town, like, how do you do, neighbor? Like, think of... Who's the neighbor from The Simpsons? Uh, Ned Flanders. <laughs> how do you do, neighborino? Exactly. Imagine an entire town of Ned Flanders 
And then suddenly there's just like hardcore crime injected into the town. Whoa. Okay. And it's like, and it it's always like a little bit sudden and shocking, but it's like, I can't believe these little nice down home characters are engaging in this shit. And it's very entertaining. I love Fargo. Um, if you did watch Burn After Reading, Burn After Reading is fun, but it's more silly, ridiculous. But Fargo is actually somewhat compelling as a drama, even though it is a little bit silly and ridiculous. As well. All I remember from Burn After Reading is a commercial that showed Brad Pitt running on a treadmill. And I think he falls or something. I don't know. Oh, God. But, but that's Brad all I remember. Great. Brad Pitt is great in that movie, but he's also fucking ridiculous in that movie. Everyone in that movie is fucking ridiculous and just stupid people that you get to watch do stupid things. But it's entertaining. It's very entertaining. See, um, I'm almost tempted to go into Burn After Reading because we just watched Inglorious, so I get to double dose Brad Pitt action there, but I feel like oh. we gotta mix it up and go somewhere else. I don't know. We'll, I'll let you know what we watch over it. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to it, because these are... I love people watching movies. It's good. Mm -hmm. Or just enjoying art. Yeah, and enjoying as a reminder, art. Achievers, uh, there is over now 60 movies um, <laughs> from a combined number of different people. Christian, Ro, uh, Jose, lots of different people have been adding to the list, so uh, yeah. this will be a ongoing series, to say the least. Uh, See you in four years. Yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, if we watch one a week, that is like over a year and a half. Probably so. Definitely. Achievers, thank you so much for joining me for this a newest episode of the Easy Achievers Game Podcast. Of course, we come to you every single Friday with the new episodes. Remember, we do clips as well of the show. If you do not, uh, usually that's for the audience that isn't primarily listening to the actual show. But remember, you can also watch the clips if you find yourself not having time to devote time to the show. Remember, description and timestamps are always found below in whatever service you're watching on soundcloud and things it's going to be in the descriptions if you want to skip around remember that's in every um every episode so get used to those aside from that remember support emmett Watkins jr over here he recently opened a new show i wish i opened oh, wow. the show with this i completely forgot sir i apologize it's you nice. started spooned right uh, spoonful. No, spoonful. it's spooned, right? You're sp <laughs> or as in like you're spooning someone, and you're sp uh, well, you're spooning sure Mario, not Bros. Day. Correct? Yeah, this is another drop from uh, Sloppy Toppy Entertainment. Uh, spoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, we we start a new podcast. Me and Mario Pequadiel, or you might know him as Mario, not Bros. From the kind of funny community. Uh, he hit me up a while ago. It's like, hey, yo, remember one big topic? I want to do that again but not alone and you're the one I want. So I'm like, let's, let's do that. And so, yeah, we've been talking about it for a while. We finally got it going. Uh, episode one is out now where I talk about my existential crisis for, uh, because of these Saints Row reviews and also corporate mergers in general with all the HBO Max news going on. So yeah, it's a good episode. Go ahead and check that out. We're going to be making more on a biweekly basis. So every other Tuesday, you'll see a new episode from us until I can get a better schedule to where maybe we can do it weekly. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about it. It's a good show. Go ahead and check that out. And also, you still got Players Club podcast over at VG.TV that I do every week. Just upload a new episode of that. Uh, and yeah, perhaps you'll see me in more stuff. People, I got a DM last night from per, a person I've never heard of. And I have to investigate what's up with them. But maybe you'll see me on more shows. I don't know. <laughs> mm, always mysterious. I like to hear that. I actually got... I won't say the name just in case they don't want me to, but I got an email from someone after I invited them on the show with a very, very, very kind of who the fuck are you energy? And I kind of liked it. I was like, all right, I don't, I don't take offense, but it was very funny. I got the email after like four weeks after I emailed this person. I was like, all right, <laughs> could have Googled my name, but whatever. I'll tell you, I guess. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that'll be a fun guest, maybe. I don't know. But uh, have some fun. I have people lined up. Uh, over the next month, very excited. Get prepared, everyone. Um, lots of fun people uh, coming in to co-host the show with me. Until the next time, though, of course, remember... Go, Chief. <laughs>